Tonight, Tim Tebow and the number five Florida Gators are hosting the Miami Hurricanes in the swamp. Not a seat to be had, folks. 90,000 on hand. And when you're talking intimidation, you're talking to swamp and games. But welcome, everybody. For Kirk Herb Street, I'm Brett Musburger. Tim Tebow, what else can you say about this young man? Well, it, you know what kind of player you have in Tim Tebow. And I think a lot of fans are anxious to see how the Gators will be different in 2008 with Tim Tebow because he has so many more weapons around him. And I think that's what you'll see tonight. Percy Harvin is back in the lineup, his favorite target. Look for him to be heavily involved. And, of course, Chris Rainey and Jeff Demps. A lot of weapons. And Tim Tebow, his plan tonight is to spread the wealth and also make a few plays himself. So into this stuff, see, I'm by the name of Robert Marv, only his first start, Kurt. Well, I can't even imagine what he is thinking right now, making his first collegiate start, taking his first snap, and in my opinion, the most hostile environment in all of college football. The most important thing is keep his composure early. Don't worry about if you make a mistake. I think Miami will be conservative with their play calling, but they can't be too conservative. They've got to let him make a play or two by throwing the ball downfield. Here's the tradition. And here come the Gators. GameFace.com for a chance to win huge prizes all season long. And ESPN Game Plan. See the most college football every Saturday. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. And into this fire steps Miami coach Randy Shannon. He's with Lisa Salters. Let's go to Lisa. We're in the swamp. This will be Robert Marv's first real game in almost two years. What do you expect to see out of your quarterback tonight? Well, we expect him to go out there and run the offense like he's been doing in practice all week long. We're going to go into camp. And we feel confident that our passing game will help him get settled down and do the things he needs to get done. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Now let's send it over to Erin Andrews. She's with Coach Urban Meyer. All right, Coach. Percy Harvin's first game back from heel surgery. After seeing him in practice this week, what can you expect? I think you're going to see old Percy Harvin play a little ball tonight. The theme this year is reducing Tim Tebow's workload, but against Miami's speed, how much will that apply tonight? No, there's never been uh, any intent to reduce Tim Tebow's workload. We're going to go try to win a game. All right, Coach, thank you. Brent, up to you. All right, Aaron, thank you. Florida won the toss. They deferred. Miami will begin with the ball here tonight in Gainesville. And the Canes have a six-game winning streak working. That's right. The last time... The Gators won was 1985. They don't meet every year. It's not like Florida, Florida State or Florida State, Miami. They played six times, all won by the Canes. But tonight, the Gators are a huge favorite. Coach. Found it very interesting. Tim Tebow and Urban Meyer telling us this might be one of the hottest tickets that they have seen since they've been here in Florida. One of the more hostile environments that they're expecting as well. Caleb Sturgis will put the ball on the tee at the 30-yard line. Ryan Hill and Brandon Harris back deep for the Canes. Imagine what Robert Marv is thinking right now. No, 
will come out on the 20 yard line as Ryan Hill stumbled and fell down into the end zone. And yeah, you've got to wonder what they will do to calm him down here, Herbie, at well, the start of this game. He is a very, very confident young man, albeit a freshman, a redshirt freshman who sat out last year after a serious automobile accident. The players tell us they believe in him. The coaches tell us that they believe in him. And I expect a conservative approach. Remember, Miami's strength is their offensive line and their running back combination of Javaris James and Craig Cooper. They'll rely on them to take some of the pressure away. Greg Cooper comes on to the field. And Marv takes his first snap and hands it off to Cooper, who picked up a couple of yards against a very intense front. Now, as we take a look at the Miami impact, you heard Kirk talk about how they're going to keep it simple, rely on the running backs. We will see Javaris James before long. We have already seen Cooper carry the ball. He's a young man who was Mr. Football once in Tennessee. And Ja'Cory Harris, who quarterbacked the Canes a week ago to a win, will see action in both halves. Now it is second down and nine. His first pass complete. No, it's dropped. It was dropped by Hankerson. Leonard Hankerson. And that should have been eaten up. Well, you got to help your young quarterback out. And Hankerson knows he should have caught this. Good throw by Marvis. Simple throw. It's low, but still, the football has to be caught. He knows that the corner's coming up to make the play. But every single play matters for Miami. they got to help this quarterback and find a reason to believe that they can win in the swamp. Third and nine. Three down linemen defensively. Can they get to Marv? They do not. But enough heat from that secondary and backing out beautifully was Dustin Doe. He defended the receiver that time and Miami's three and out. Look out boys, look out now. Here comes the best punt return team in the nation. And coming back deep for him right now is that young man Brandon James. He took one 74 yards for the TD. Averaging better than 23 yards of return matched against Matt Bosher of Jupiter and it's a bad punt it's off the side of the foot it's out of bounds the young jitters are showing up here early the Canes are not calm yet and that could spell trouble Kirk big trouble well they have to keep their composure and poise the quarterback Robert Marv has made two pretty good throws his receivers dropped two footballs the punter comes out in front of this crowd shanks a punt and gives the Florida Gators the football and Tim Tebow at the 35 yard line and you know all about Tim Tebow won the Heisman Trophy as a sophomore a lot of talk and speculation this year of seeing more weapons around him and taking the load off of number 15. He's going to throw on first down, rolling left, throws incomplete, and it'll be second and ten. Now, let's let Tim Tebow introduce himself and his key offensive threats. And here are a few impact players on our Gator offense. Number one, Percy Harvin, the most dynamic player in college football. Number two, Chris Rainey, an athlete who, with the ball in his hands, can take it the distance on any play. And number three, Brandon James. Don't let him get in the open field or it's going to be dangerous. He talked about Rainey. Here is that pistol with the quarterback Tebow now motioning Rainey right over to the right side of him. And the two start together on a sort of an option look and Tebow keeps it. And that's something that we will see frequently here tonight. Now you'll see the entire lineup right across the top of your screen. Bill Young, the new defensive coordinator from Miami, realizes that he has to attack Tim Tebow. And that time you saw Colin McCarthy, number 44, spying and watching Tim Tebow, saw the ball fake and instantly closed the gap to come towards Tim Tebow. You have to do that. You cannot allow him to come after you and attack you as a defense. But Jomo gets down to that defensive front now. Bill Young likes to move his linebackers around frequently. From the gun, there's pressure. Tebow steps away from it brilliantly. There is a penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. Tebow made it to the 21-yard line, which would have given the Gators a first down, but there is a penalty flag back at the 35. SEC officiating crew. Offside. Number 97 on the defense, penalty decline. 
First down. Yeah, and that was a Jomo on the right side, and that is another Kane mistake here in the early going. When you want to come on the road and win in a stadium like this, Randy Shannon knows they've got to do every little part of every aspect of this football game. You cannot make these crucial mistakes and self-destruct. Sharpton, the linebacker. Looks like he's looking for where he should settle here in this young defense. And then the linesman stops it. There'll be a timeout on the Gators. So Urban Meyer, who a couple of years ago won a national championship, upsetting highly favored Ohio State. Last year, the Gators were beaten four times. This year, they are back. And many, including my partner, Kirk Herbstreit, think they can make it all the way to the BCS championship game in Miami. As most of you know, this is the height of the hurricane season down here in Florida. We didn't know what to expect tonight, but uh, we were spared this one. And it's going to be a fine night for football. No bad weather in the immediate future here. And here's Percy Harvin touching the ball for the first time. And the brilliant one makes it to the 12 yard line. Number one, Kirk, we're going to see him a dozen times tonight, don't you think? That's the goal tonight from Dan Mullen, the offensive coordinator. He told us 12 to 15 touches, and we were a little surprised. This young man has not been tackled since going all the way back to their bowl game against Michigan. But you see the burst that he brings back to this lineup. And I know that Jeff Dems is fast and Chris Rainey and Brandon James, but Percy Harvin brings acceleration, and Brandon put 15 pounds on. Look at his arm. He's a big guy now. Yes, he is. He was so excited to get back out in the football field. He and Tebow have a great relationship. Harvin, of course, not only is he a wide receiver, but a very dangerous running back used in the uh, option attack that Urban Meyer brought here from Utah. Urban, of course, one time was an assistant coach at Notre Dame, then became a head coach at Bowling Green, and that's where he decided to tinker with this option attack. And there's nuances, and he's picked up things through the years, some of which Rodriguez's stuff added to it. And, of course, when you get a trigger man, Kirk, like Tim Tebow, it is so much easier to run any kind of an option attack when you've got a young man who's as powerful as a fullback and can throw it like a primetime quarterback. No question. Brandon James motions out. He too is a dangerous one. He's over to the left side and it looks like he's got man over there. Tebow throwing in zone. Touchdown! Aaron Hernandez, the tight end, scores the first touchdown of the game. Hernandez was a big part of this attack as you watched the game plan the other day, Kirk. You know, he didn't do much last week in their opener, but you could tell the coaches wanted to get him the football. And with Cornelius Ingram out for the year, the highly touted tight end for Florida, Aaron Hernandez has to step up, and that time, boy, what a catch. Jonathan Phillips. Tax on the extra point. And where is Hernandez from, that young man? The worldwide leaders in his neighborhood. That's right. You're looking at a tight end from Bristol, Connecticut. Gators strike first. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by the all-new 2009 seven-passenger Kia Borrego. Visit KiaBorrego.com for more information. Kirk, what a facility. The Gateway of Champions opening at Ben Hill Griffin, a $28 million project, tripled the size of the weight room, interactive display for the fans to come in, Urban Meyer's new office. No wonder Phil Knight of Nike <laughs> dropped by to say hello the other day. Huh? You, you win a national championship and you play in the SEC. First thing you have to do is take the facilities to a different level, and that's what Urban Meyer's done here. Remember now, this was set up by a 14-yard shank punt. Florida began the drive at Miami's 35-yard line. Let's see now if the Canes have settled down. Sturges for the corner and out of bounds, and that'll draw the penalty flag. 
Herbie, uh, show fans is something that you spotted here. Uh, first Tim Tebow's toughness, which was on display all of 2007. Watch how he throws off his back foot. Pressure gets to him, but the arm strength to back, jump backwards and throw the football. And watch where you see Hernandez come. He's lined up. Nobody covers him. Miami brings pressure, but nobody picks up Hernandez. And I think the corner, Grant, just didn't think that Tebow could get the ball over top of him with the arm strength, but Tebow clearly makes a nice throw. Okay, it's interesting looking at his statistics because he's not a prototype thrower, as you and I have talked about. He completed better than 60% right. last year and had only six intercepted. I mean, that causes scouts to sit up and take notice. So here we go now. First and 10, the fullback's back in, and they run straight ahead, and look at that gator front. Led by Jermaine Cunningham, number 49, perhaps their best D lineman, and he jumped all over Cooper. Brent, this is something that Robert Marm and Miami is going to face. Look, we call it the box area, up close to the line of scrimmage. There are eight, almost nine blue jerseys. There are not enough Miami offensive linemen to block, and that's what Florida is going to say. Let's see this quarterback beat us by throwing the ball because we're not going to let you run the football. Very basic power eye formation. No daylight. There's just nothing there. It is all blue. They're just chopping down on this running game here in the early going. And, uh, you know, Marv threw the ball well. Herbie in the first series, sure. they're going to have to have him throw it. He was not helped at all by his receivers. Well, the one thing that Charlie Strong, as a defensive coordinator, knows is he's got a young freshman quarterback and an offense that's going to rely on their running game. So until Miami can prove that they can throw the football, you're going to see them on first and second down load the line of scrimmage to get them into this situation, third and 11. That glove worn on an injured left hand that he suffered in an automobile accident and cost him any playing time next year as they try to set a middle screen, which is incomplete, and again, three and out, and uh, so they're done early. But they need a better punt now. They need to let the defense try to settle in and not give the Gator prime field position in this series. Brandon James can do just that as a return man, but Bosher's got to do better as a punter. The young man has been assigned to do it all. Kick off, punt, and kick field goals. This one much, much better. Good hang time. James lets it go to the end zone. It'll come out of the 20. More like it. We're at the Swamp in Gainesville. 90,000 on hand. It's 7-0 Gators. When it comes to luxury SUV commercials, you expect certain things. You expect to see a well-appointed interior with navigation system, rear camera display, widescreen monitor, and maybe even a metaphor for its 10-speaker infinity sound system. Yes, you'd expect a lot from a luxury SUV commercial, but what you wouldn't expect is this. Introducing the Kia Borrego, a new kind of luxury SUV. Now with 2.5% APR financing plus $1,000 bonus cash. Judges. Nice moves. Billy White Shoes Johnson. Now he had some nice moves. Today everybody's got a dance. T.O., Chad Johnson. Oh, I love the river dance. He killed that. That was a classic word. We're talking about classics. Let's talk about the 85 Super Bowl shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> Tune into the best team in football. Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM Sundays at 11. The sport's biggest star, the undefeated contender. Only one will break through and get closer to the light heavyweight title as former champ Chuck the Iceman Liddell, coming off a thrilling victory over Vanderlei Silva, faces Sugar Rashad Evans, the ultimate fighter winner who's never lost and is determined to knock off the UFC legend. The Ultimate Fighting Championship presents UFC 88 Breakthrough, live Saturday, September 6th from Phillips Arena in Atlanta, Georgia, on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. When applying to college, 86% of students prefer to visit schools without a parent. This is why. Road trip! Road trip! <laughs> oh, no. From Walt Disney Pictures. How's the daddy-daughter bonding going? Great! <laughs> Just don't embarrass me, okay? How can I embarrass you? Melanie, I got your lemonade. I, 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 I. Sip on that. College road trip.
Well, Tropical Storm Hannah did interrupt the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, and so tomorrow, fans, Richmond, the Chevy Rock and Roll 400, ESPN now, at 1 Eastern. And this is the last race before the chase. So those two guys, David Reagan and Casey Kane, they got to turn it on. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon and the boys are trying to hold their position there. We were in the heart of NASCAR. Oh, you got, you're all over that. <laughs> you and then off and ripped down his rainy, terrific defense that time by Ojomo. A red shirt freshman, number 97, made up for that offside penalty against him. You know, the Canes are getting penetration. Bill Young's defense, they're getting in there. They're getting men across that line of scrimmage. Without a doubt. I, I think Bill Young and I think Randy Shannon are very confident with the Miami defense, it's just a bit of an unknown. There's so many new faces and there's so much youth on this defense that they're, they're willing to roll different bodies in to see how they perform, but they are definitely getting in through this Florida offensive line. So on that snap to Percy Harvin, the direct snap, you will frequently see him <laughs> line up and take the direct snap and we'll take another look at that. Well, once in a while, you're gonna see Percy Harvard. It's another way to get him a touch. It's the second touch of the night, direct snap. He's more than capable of handling this with his athletic ability and it just gives Miami one more thing to be concerned about when you see number one back there. And they did tell us if he has to, he can yeah. throw the football just to keep defenses honest. He wanted us to say that, so all the <laughs> defensive like coordinators, the SK, yeah. uh, they, they, they definitely planted that with you and me. <laughs> Third and short. I wonder who's going to carry the ball here. Yeah, exactly. Rolling hard over to the left and throwing for it. Complete to Riley Cooper and the first down. Let's check in down below with Aaron. Brent, you and Kirk both mentioned the fact Percy Harvin hasn't been involved in any contact since Florida's bowl game against Michigan last season. Of course, that heel surgery he underwent pretty gruesome. They actually took out some of the bone, had some screws in that heel. Talking to Percy this week, you guys know he was just saying I was a little hesitant during practice past two weeks I feel good talk to the equipment guys they said Percy is wearing a special Nike shoe that's really cupping that heel well so when he first gets that touch it holds it in so he doesn't hurt himself again and there are an incomplete pass will make it second down to ten you know probably there we can uh, see the specially designed shoe for uh, Percy the one thing when you see Percy Harvin and you meet him fine young man as uh, so many of these players on both these teams are but you get an impression of how fast these two schools are. They have some unbelievable at the speed that you could line up with on both sides of the ball. Yeah, in Florida, a little bit more established, especially offensively. They have six players legitimately in their skill positions under a 4-4 four -four that they're trying to get the ball to them. I can't drive a car. <laughs> Here comes Tebow. And he's out to the 40. This will make it about third down and just about six yards coming up here, Irving. And there's been so much talk from last season when Tim Tebow won the Heisman to this season. How is it going to be different? A lot of uh, there have been a lot of stories written about they're going to take the pressure off of him, try to let him stay fresher longer this season, and that's true. Uh, and he is developing as a pocket passer, and he wants to show the NFL he can sit in the pocket. But at the same time, at the end of the day, when number 15 needs to make a play, he'll make the play. Brandon Harris, one of many freshmen, in fact, 21 were used by Miami, checks in as the nickelback. Tebow's got plenty of time, no pressure this time. Runs away from the man who did finally penetrate for the first out. There was that patience in the pocket. Kirk, we talked to Tebow about it. The one thing he wants to do, look for the primary, come back secondary, and then finally, if he has to, take off. Great point, Brent. This is something that Dan Mullen and, and Tim Tebow worked on very hard. Look at the patience. First option's not there. You look for the second option, but it's a fine line. You don't want to be too patient and take away from a strength in this offense, and that's where Tebow is able to still do what he did so often last year. We talked about speed, and maybe the fastest gator of them all is out there now. <laughs> There he is, Hold Jeff. On oh, Hold boy. on, everybody. Here we go. This is a young man that uh, uh, he might have qualified for the Olympics. I'll tell you, look at that spin move middle, crosses midfield. Whoa. Big flag coming in. Tackle by number three, linebacker Glenn Cook. What's that old line? Faster than the hiccup? <laughs> <laughs> Alex Hawkins must have invented that line back in the old days when he was covered in NFL games. This looks like a late, late call. It has to be a dead ball foul. 
I think it's going to be on Florida's offensive line in here. The other thing, Herbie, when we're talking about the offensive line is uh, as we get this call. After the play is over, personal foul, number 75 on the offense. Penalty, 15 yards. That's their best offensive lineman, Phil Troutwine. Uh, certainly they're uh, one of the most experienced, but as we saw Troutwine, and you look at these guys, look how fit this offensive line looks. I mean, you did not see a lot of fat when we watched them work, Herbie. You yeah. saw the, the foul. Yeah, Troutwine trying to get downfield to help his is running back but you're right they are trim they're lean and they love to get down the field because they know with the speed that they have you never give up on a play and they got two guys I can't tell apart the Ponzi twins dash it off Brandon James Anthony Reddick veteran in that secondary the safety of the Canes comes up and makes the play such an important series here for Miami it's early in this game. You're on the road. You have a young football team. Nothing going right offensively. And now you got a chance if you can play well here. Still, you don't want to give up on Florida's offense. Third long, they could still convert. But if you can get Tim Tebow to the sidelines to get your offense back out there, maybe you get your, your attitude back in the right direction. And uh, Lewis Murphy has not been involved. They're pressing him off to Tebow's right on this third and long. And Tebow will be looking to get it deep if he can. Great time. Throws it and almost intercepted. Great defense that time by Brandon Harris, one of many talented freshmen with a terrific upside for Miami. Boy, Brandon Harris is a corner. Last year in high school, he ended up being one of the top cornerbacks in all the high school football. Came down to the end and he decided to go to Miami. And you, Brett, you called out Lewis Murphy. It's his chance to make a play. But look at the jump here that Brandon Harris make, makes as a nickelback, kind of disguising and baiting Tim Tebow to throw that football. Urban Meyer spends hours with the punt team. Now he's got Chaz Henry back. Cooper who returned one for touchdown bobbled picked up drives it off Cooper back to the 10 yard line stumbles to the 26 yard line pretty good play that time by the Miami defense can the offense do something go Gators go Gators go Gators go Gators Go start a Fortune 500 company. Go write the great American novel. Go cure cancer. Go to Mars. Go Gators. Visit GoGatorNation.com to continue the story. The University of Florida, the foundation for the Gator Nation. Here is Marv, fakes the handoff to James. He keeps it. And Marv, who was a pretty good runner over at Plant High School in Tampa, Kirk, he takes off that time. He is very athletic. He's not the traditional pocket passer that we have seen at times down with the Hurricanes. Marv can hurt you with his wheels. Absolutely. And Ja'Cory Harris, when he gets in, can do the same thing. I love the call by Patrick Nix to move the pocket. Don't continue to put your quarterback back directly behind that center. Move him around because of his athletic ability and give him the option to run or throw. Randy Shannon's son over the ball as the center. Snaps it to Marv, and here's the handoff, and James with his first carry trying to get enough for the first down, and the Gators are right there at the point of attack. You can see how close that is, and it'll be third down and short. This would be just a first down, something for this young offense to build on. Absolutely. Just get a first down and stop the bleeding here and get your confidence back. But Brandon Spikes being back in this lineup, you can see a difference in the Florida Gator attitude defensively from last week against Hawaii to what we've seen tonight in these first few series. He's the leader of this defense. Give a fullback. Strength over to the left side of the formation. They're going to try to throw for it, and this time they hang on. After dropping one, Leonard Hankerson hangs on for the first down. It's like the little engine that could. I think I can. I think I can. First down. Move the sticks for the first time in the history of young Robert Mark's career. He moves the Canes into uh, an opportunity to have another opportunity to set it down. Robert Mark has not shown a lot of jitters. No. He looks like, you know, he's the real deal here so far. It hasn't been the quarterback causing any kind of the problems. And of course, we told you about that glove over there on the left hand as he hands it off. And 
Uh, for more on that, let's go down below to Lisa. That's right, Brent. As you mentioned, Marv was in a really bad car accident last July. He and two teammates were on their way to Miami from Tampa, and one of his teammates who was driving fell asleep at the wheel. It was about midnight. Police say that the car flipped over at least seven or eight times, and Marv's left hand, his non-throwing hand, really badly damaged. He showed it to me. It's a really bad scar on that hand. He said he doesn't really have a whole lot of feeling, and that's why he wears that glove. But, Brent, it's lucky that none of them were more seriously hurt or even killed. And we got a second and eight with 4-10 remaining in the opening quarter. And Cooper's back on the field. And he's about four yards short of the first down. Greg Cooper. Sort of interesting, the one thing the young man, Cooper, does not like, as James is over there getting a little uh, attention, uh, looks like uh, he's getting taped up, so Javaris is over there. And the one thing that Cooper does not like is for anybody to call him Craig. So guess what happened when he went to Tennessee? Uh, here's Mr. Football from Tennessee, meets the head coach, Philip Fulmer. He calls him Craig. Uh-oh. Uh, off to the wrong foot. <laughs> and uh, down to Miami, came number two, and they're glad to have him. Marv has got to hurry now. We got five seconds left on the 40-second clock. Quarterback draw. Can he get it for the first down? He does. Tough little hombre, and they're moving the ball right now. Bar, Talking to Patrick Nix this week, Brent, I know he told us that when you have a young quarterback on the road, he just wants him to be patient. Hang in there. If you make mistakes, don't dwell on them. Keep moving forward. He also said... He wants his quarterback to believe in his ability, believe in your reads, and just trust it and go out and execute. And so far from what we've seen, as this game continues to go on, he looks like he's settling in. But they've got to throw more on first and 10 to give him a chance. Florida's not expecting pass on first and 10. And uh, every basic run formation here, and they're going to stay on the ground for a couple of yards. Cooper's still a running back because we saw James over there being tended to. So we'll see a full load of of uh, Cooper now is another one of those great freshmen, Aldarius Johnson. There were uh, seven of those youngsters from Miami Northwestern High School, and uh, folks, that was as good a high school football team as there was in America, and the uh, seven of them, it'll be great to see how those former greats in high school, how they perform as the years pass by. A terrific upside for Randy Shannon and the Canes, you would think, and Aldarius is outside the formation. He's got man coverage. Looking in that direction, he's loose, he's got it, first down. Now Darius Johnson, they had him in man over there, and the man lost him for a second, and they've got another first down. Pierre-Louis took a chance here in man coverage off to the left. I'll tell you what, Robert Marv has an arm. He throws it to the outside shoulder just the way he needs to, and Johnson, as a young, a young wide receiver, fought off the corner, Pierre-Louis, Concentrates, makes the catch, and then gets up field. Okay, how about this drive building confidence Ooh. for these youngsters? Huh? True freshman there, just caught him. Redshirt freshman, the trigger man. And he's off to Cooper, and he's banging over behind the left side. And there's Brandon Spikes. Did I tell you, Brandon the Spikes' his father heard <laughs> the elevator? Huh? I was I was going up, and there was Brandon's father there. He's doing, hey, hey. He said, do you know my uh, son? I said, no, I really don't. I didn't. He's Brandon Spikes. He says he's coming back. And he's going to tear one of those running backs' heads off he's today. Bringing it. He is bringing it. And so far, he's been all over the field here in this first quarter. There is number 51. Looking down now, we're at 125. You can see that the bug has been restored for you here. We're second down and six. And uh, that time, there wasn't much doing. As Joe Hayden, perhaps the best corner right now on this Gator team, he makes a stop. This is one of those games that Florida is expected to win and win comfortably. And when you talk to Miami, their whole attitude is about bringing the Miami program back to where it was in 2000 and 01 and 02. This is a measuring stick. And when you're looking at it from that standpoint, Miami is trying to get their, like we said earlier, confidence. And these drives early in this game are crucial to building that up. Marv wants to go back on the left side. There's a new corner over there. Hankerson was the receiver uh, working against Jenkins, who had just checked in. So remember, Pierre Louis had a little trouble over there with the freshman. And now we'll come to a fourth down. 
I think Marv is pretty impressive, Herbie. I don't know I, about what you think right I now. I agree. That's pretty good looking arm. I, I agree, and I think they're only going to help him by giving him a chance to throw more often on first and ten and moving him around in the pocket, avoiding third down and long to help any quarterback, let alone a young freshman. And how's this for Hutzpah? We're going for it. And Marv is going to roll right. Take off, run for the first down. How about that? Randy could have pooch punted it. Could have played the conservative fashion and said, you know what? We can pick this up. What a confidence builder. What we're watching and right before our eyes is a young quarterback getting settled into a football game and taking on not only the skater defense, but the environment and, and gaining confidence Right now, you see after fourth down, after he picks up the first down, he's walking back to the huddle, and he's got a little bit of a swagger going back to the huddle. The Canes invented swagger. Isn't it? Sure it is. <laughs> the Gator players told us first down and ten. And there's a penalty flag. And guess what? Marv was going to throw again, too. That's the good call on first and ten, the play action. That's what you've been asking yeah. for. Get the right tackle moved here. Brought to the snap. Ball start. 76 on the offense. 35 yeah. yards. That's our main one. That's uh, Chris Rutledge. That's up Reggie Youngblood over there at right tackle. So we expect to see him in the uh, final seconds here. With the uh, opening quarter. 12 play drive going right now for Robert Barnes and the Canes. If you want to pick out a key play as the clock runs out of the first quarter, it was that 14 yard shank punt. If you joined us late, that set up a 35 yard scoring drive. Gators lead it, but the Canes are hanging tough in Gainesville. Well, we welcome you back to college football, the best regular season in all of sport, amateur or professional. It's short, folks, but every week matters. How about East Carolina? Another upset. Herbie calls it again. They beat West Virginia. Unbelievable. And on first down, Cooper spins down at the 33 yard line. And uh, let's go to Reese Davis in the studio for Sports Center right now. And Reese, we got a lot right now. Yes, you do, Brent. You guys have a figurative storm brewing. Tropical Storm Hannah has wreaked havoc with the NASCAR schedule. The Sprint Cup race postponed until Sunday. You can see it at 1 o'clock Eastern on ESPN Nationwide, 6.30 on ESPN2. It also impacted the U.S. Open, where the men's final will now be on Monday. Roger Federer is through. Rafael Nadal and Andy Murray are going to have to finish up their suspended match. Play. And Reese back here, second and long. Marv rolling hard to the left. And uh, is that a horse collar? Sure looks like it from here. I did not see a flag thrown by the line judge who was working down in that particular direction. Carlos Dunlap chasing down Robert My partner Marv. made that motion, so I thought I, I was going to say. I mean, he whipped that hand over there in front I'm of me. I'm taking folks. care of the quarterback. I was like, whoa. Hey, Let's see hey. the big right hand here. You know, he's either he's grabbing uh, either, either, uh, either you can't have him on the pads, either, either the jersey you know, or the shoulder. Quarterback's got to play football, don't they? Yeah, but come on. Woo! Okay. <laughs> grabbing something there. All right, it's third down and 20 now. Miami's had four first downs on this drive. They made a fourth and five, but it is third and 20. They are backed up. Marv in trouble, throws a quick screen. Did not gain much on it, even though it was complete to Coleman. <laughs> That penalty that set him back. Yeah, right tackle move, Chris Rutledge from first and ten when they had some momentum after they picked up the first down up to the scramble by Marv. Set him back. I couldn't recover from that. We're going to see Ja'Cory Harris, according to Coach Shannon, in the first half as well as the second. As I saw Marv going off that time, uh, freshman taking a little bit of a beating. We'll see what happens. And the Bosher is going to try a 50-yarder. Distance. Yes. Right down. Tony Pena drive in Jupiter, baby. You told us about him <laughs> last night. I mean, that had about 10 or 15 more yards. Crushed it. He's the best kicker they ever had at Jupiter High School, right down the uh, street from where we are. Old buddy of yours designed that golf course down there, Jack Nicholas. 
So how about the Canes, huh? And Coach hey. Shannon hanging right in there. It goes zero to 60 faster than a Porsche Boxster. It outcorners the Mercedes E550 and the BMW 550i. Introducing the all new 375 horsepower Hyundai Genesis. The barrier to luxury has just been officially kicked in. Find out more at HyundaiGenesis.com. Okay, so I've done the math on this never-ending pasta bowl. Well, there's 42 different sauce and pasta combinations. Yeah. And there's seven of us. Right. So if we come here on three different nights... Well, you do the math, I'm doing the Alfredo. <laughs> Olive Garden's never-ending pasta bowl is back with delicious new sauces like tomato basil caprese and our Asiago garlic Alfredo. Pick any combination of sauce and pasta, then another. Try them all for just $8.95 plus endless salad and breadsticks. This math tastes delicious. <laughs> Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Did you know every Sunday a football fan goes without watching their favorite player? According to a recent study by DirecTV, over 50 million fans live away from their team. It's a condition known as Displaced Fan Syndrome, or DFS. I first contracted DFS when Peyton moved to Indianapolis, then again when Eli went to New York. Thankfully, DirecTV has a cure. Never miss a moment of your favorite team. NFL Sunday Ticket, only from DirecTV. Every game, every Sunday. Help fight DFS. Make the call. You've seen the rumble, experienced the elimination chamber, and felt hell in a cell. Now, a new innovation will put champions in jeopardy like never before. It's the first ever championship scramble. Five superstars. After 20 minutes, only one can be called the official champion. Those odds practically guarantee they'll be a new champion. WWE Unforgiven. Live Sunday, September 7th on Direct TV Pay-Per-View. 12.51 left here in the first half in Gainesville. Gators struck first if you just joined us. And a young man who shanked a 14-yard punt just nailed a 50-yard field goal. Now his third duty, his third motion of the night. He'll kick it off. It's like a gopher on the tee. He's got to have three different motions here. Tonight. Kickoff fielded up the seven by Brandon James, the speedster, down at the 23 yard line. Well, let's go to our AFLAC trivia question. Let's go back to the mid 90s and ask you, Kirk, which quarterback gave Steve Spurrier his first SEC loss? Here at the Swamp. See, now you're in my ballpark. That's it. Last That's it, year, you were in the 20s and 30s. This year, <laughs> now you're in the 90s. Now it's easy. Yeah, and, and there's a reason why we're asking a question. I'll give everybody a hand. It's like a there's a reason stumper. why we're yeah. asking it. Okay? I got that one. Dick Vermeil already got the answer. I'm telling you right yeah. now. <laughs> he, uh, he helped describe it. 7-3. Tebo back in the gun now. That was more. Keystone Moore getting his uh, first carry of the night. Uh, you know, you've got to keep an eye on those running backs, those wide receivers, the Gators use, because there's a whole lot of them over there on urban sideline. Oh, there, there are so many, there's so many skill players that they can rotate in, and that's the difference I think we're going to see at the end of the day with right. the Gators. Last year it was Tim Tebow and Percy Harvin. This year you're going to see up to eight or nine different guys who are capable of getting touches, and that's what they're trying to do this year, spread it around. Here comes second down. An option look, Mr. Tebow is going to keep it. And uh, stepping over there was Anthony Reddick, one of the veterans on this defense. I know it's very early in this football game, but I'm impressed with what I've seen. Not only is someone talking about the youth of the quarterback from Miami, Robert Marsh, but there's a lot of youth on this Miami defense. And to step into this stadium and try to stop Tim Tebow and all of his weapons is not easy for anybody. And we've seen a, a, a Miami defense penetrating, making plays in space, which you have to do when you face the Gators. They've played well so far. Jeff Demps, that's him who just motioned out, sits there. There's four receivers out there to that side, and Tebow's in trouble and sacked by Sean Spence. Ripped down by number 31. And that's one of the freshmen, Kirk, that you were talking about, is Sean Spence. 
They mean everywhere you look, you've got kids. This is one from Northwestern. And give here's Bill, one of the baby bulls. That's right. Give Bill Young an assist here because he is confusing the Florida Gator offensive line with different looks. This is what Michigan had success with in the bowl game. They came after Tim Tebow with a lot of different looks and a lot of pressure. And that's right now what we're seeing when Tim Tebow gets the third down. Low snap. Doing a good job of troubling the center a little bit here too and this is going to give them a reasonable field position out at the uh, 34 yard line. Cooper didn't even make an effort to make a mistake on that ball let it roll dead and growing up right before our eyes Miami's got the ball when you come back. ESPN's college football primetime brought to you by Bud Light. Endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. And Kingsford, get your tailgate started right with Kingsford Charcoal from the Home Depot. Ah, yes, the swamp here in Gainesville. That's a legendary pub over across the way. Met a lot of good folks over there. There's Ja'Cory Harris. He quarterbacked the win last week because Marv had been suspended for the game, so he's in for the first time. And Thomas, number 21, is a story. That's his first carry as a running back. And as we see Harris, and there's a reason why Thomas is on the field as a running back. Let's go to Lisa down on the field. Well, Brent, just a few minutes ago, Javaris James went back to the Hurricanes locker room, and it didn't look good. He wasn't even able to get back there on his own. He was on crutches. The trainers were working on him for about 20 minutes on that left ankle. They taped it up, put his shoe on, taped up the shoe, but Brent, he couldn't even put any weight at all on that left ankle. So you would think, unfortunately, he's done for the night. Thomas, meanwhile, right behind the son of the coach, bolts up the middle for a first and ten. Xavier Shannon helping blow that hole open, Kirk. It's interesting. Before the game, Patrick Nick saying if Thomas gets in, it's, it's really not like a third-string tailback. They love his ability, and not only his ability, but his vision. And you can see it right there. Now, remember, you got a new quarterback in the game right there. First two plays, runs for Ja'Cory Harris. And Brent, you've seen this young man play in high school. He's got that ability to run and to throw this football. Knockdown for young Shannon, the center. First down and 10. Thomas steps back outside and is ridden down by Brandon Hicks. They are running into a 5-3, five, five down linemen, three linebackers on every snap when Miami hands the football off in first and ten. And I know there's a new quarterback in the game. You and I had a little disagreement during the break. I thought Robert Marv was starting to settle down. And I know Harris played last week, and I know he's got a lot of ability. But whoever's quarterback, just mix in some first and ten passes to slow down the Gator defense. Randy promised him that play. That's true. In the first half, second down and nine. Here's Thomas again. He's been busy he's bouncing outside, spinning, staying on his feet, and he's been a tough hombre. Helmet coming off. That must have been Spike shanking off his first helmet. It may have been. <laughs> One thing you're right about here that I could agree with is the atmosphere right now in the swamp. It is very docile. If you're ever going to insert a quarterback who's taking snaps for the first time on the road in what's perceived to be one of the most tough, the toughest environments in the country, it's right now because it's very quiet and calm right now. A lot of these youngsters know each other all across the state of Florida. They've competed against one another in high school. Harris, he's got great wheels. Bounces outside, gets it off, incomplete. May have waited just a touch too long that time as uh, Carlos Dunlap closing in big time. Janoris Jenkins, a true freshman. We're talking about so many true freshmen from Miami. Janoris Jenkins that time, the top of the screen. Outstanding coverage on yet another true freshman from Miami. He did not allow Harris, once he broke contained, to have anywhere to throw this football. Great coverage, and they love his upside as a corner to give them four solid corners for the Gators. And Bosch hangs this one up. Fair catch signal for Sealed them up inside the 15-yard line with that punt. Brandon James signaled for the fair catch. Tim Tebow and the Gators coming out. 8.06 left, and it has not been easy for them. 
back in the swamp. 806 left in the first half. Miami Kirk with 1337 a possession to 817 for the Gators. And the Gators did all their damage after that shanked punt. Short 35 yard field. That led to their touchdown. Tebow now trying to see if he can get in going. His receivers are covered, so he takes off. A big gain to the 30. Looks like he stepped out of bounds at about the 34-yard line, and Grant comes up on him. This is this is the aspect of this offense that no matter how much you see Tim Tebow develop and you hear about patience in the pocket, you still can't take away this. And he shows some patience, but this is important, stepping up into the pocket, and when the defense is exploited, you've got to be able to pick up yards, which is something that Tim Tebow does such a wonderful job of. Somebody probably blew an assignment on that. I don't think you turn Tebow loose. I think when the five receivers with the empty backfield, I think might have caused a little confusion there, and they spread the Miami defense all right. over the field. One thing about Bill Young, who's uh, who, whom you talked about. the snap. Ball start, 76 on the offense, 25 yards. Down the main That's Gilbert, Marcus Gilbert, who drew the start tonight at left guard because of an injury to Tart, so he's been over there uh, tonight. But the one thing you talked about, Bill Young, I want to make the point, we're talking about a great veteran defensive coordinator. Last year, folks, he was the defensive coordinator at Kansas when they made that terrific run and uh, wound up winning uh, the Orange Bowl. So, and uh, you go back to the, he's even touched on the NFL. He's a, he's a long-time coordinator, been at Ohio State, a lot of other places. And Rainey is lit up that time as Daryl Sharpton comes up and makes the stop. This is the potential of the Miami defense and the speed by Daryl Sharpton to recognize the play and then close. This is how you stop Florida. You cannot allow them to attack you as a defense. You have to attack them and trust your eyes. Daryl Sharpton, 5'11", about 235 pounds. Before Rainey can get started, he's taken a shoulder pad right into his chest. Nice play by 50. A junior from Coral Gables making that stop, and it is second and 16 for Tebow and the Gators. Stepping up in the pocket, and they're short of the first down as he rifles it to Riley Cooper. Let's go down below that area. Brent, Herbie mentioned the last time the offense was on the field. The line looks really, really confused. Well, I went over and observed them when they came back. And Kirk, I have to tell you, their positions coach, Steve Adazio, got them in a huddle. All the guys were leaning forward and did not lean back until it was time to get on the field. He was concentrating a lot with center Marquise Pouncey and his brother, right guard Mike Pouncey. Tebow came over for a little bit, gave some words of encouragement. But I have to tell you, he's been looking over at Urban Meyer shaking his head in frustration. You know, and Aaron, is, it's been a lot of times on third down, which is, again, right here. Let's see if they decide to bring pressure. So three down. They move a linebacker into the gaps, and here they come. Two linebackers trying to get in, and they Tebow shakes loose. Fires! Got his man at the 41-yard line. Makes a brilliant throw to Thompson. Deontay Thompson. Tebow was in all kinds of trouble. Well, the, the scheme is working for Miami. They've got the pressure on him. But Tim Tebow, again, showing you ability to break outside and throw. But it was the strength to pull away from the Miami defender in the initial contact and then buy the extra time. Instant replay, I think, saw that the one foot was clearly down in bounds. And here comes Tebow uh, gaining about a yard to the heart of, heart of that defense after the 22-yard completion on third down keeps it going for Urban Meyer. The strength of Tim Tebow can never be underestimated. In third down and you face a blitz. Cook comes off of the ground and gets right into his face and, he's, and I'll tell you for his size oh. there, that could have been called very easily coming up high like that. Now that was sophomore Alan Bailey. Yeah. He got into him pretty high that time. And, uh, that's complete to Thompson again, and uh, let's go to Reese Davis for a Sports Center in-game update. All right, Brent Studio update brought to you by Taco Bell, the other Sunshine State battle. USF and UCF and South Florida's Matt Grothy finds Cedric Hill, and on ESPN2, the Bulls with a seven-point lead. Well, we got battles of Florida breaking out all over the place here tonight, and uh, only the Knowles sitting back there and uh, enjoying these two games, huh? Five minutes to go in the first half. Low scoring. Nobody expected the Canes 
The hang is tough, but Tebow's driving the Gators again, and he's brought down. There is a penalty flag. Glenn Cook, incidentally, was coming in from behind there, number three. Another uh, Kirk, another big third down coming up here for uh, for both sides. I mean, the the Gators would like to have something positive happen at the end of the half. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the Canes, for Coach Shannon, would like to go in and uh, feel, hey, listen, we're playing, we're going helmet to helmet uh, with these guys. Interesting to see. It looks like they're they're talking to Miami with Glenn Cook about maybe another procedure call. Can maybe going to give them the option here. Not enough men on okay. the offensive line of scrimmage. Wow. Penalty five yards. Down remain third. Urban can't be happy with what's happened here after they went ahead 7-0. Well, on the first drive, they went right down the field. They had a great field position after the poor punt. 35 yards in five plays. Quick touchdown. We thought, all right, here we go. We're going to talk about some other games tonight. Yeah, we thought it was Clemson, <laughs> Alabama. Right, right. Again, I can see the look in your eye. Exactly. And then the Miami kind of settled down. The quarterback made some plays, but I've been surprised to see Tim Tebow out of rhythm and his Gator offense slowed down. Third and eight. Bill Young's been getting rushmen through. They've been coming through gaps. Tebow steps up, hit, incomplete. He had to step against pressure again that time. And it's fourth and eight. Tebow, I think, wants to go here. He does want to go for it. But, Brent, I want you to look in the pocket here. There's pressure, but Tim Tebow does not look comfortable in the pocket. Even when you don't get pressure, but you've had some consistency in getting back to the pocket, as good as Tim Tebow is, you're still going to make him feel that pressure and get him out of rhythm. And that time, he threw a football down into the ground where he had an open receiver. And that was 300 pounds of freshman pressure. No man by the name of Marcus Forston coming at him and uh, he's another one of the Bulls from uh, Northwestern. Angling the punt for the sideline. Got the coffin corner. Buried it at the one yard line. You don't see a great punt like that and Chaz Henry will get a big round of applause for the head coach. It's, it's a great punt, obviously. This is something you practice as a punter over and over. Then you go inside of the air conditioning and play video games, but you practice it over and over. And to put the Miami offense inside the one-yard line, I'll tell you, right now you get the feeling that the crowd is out of the game. They need something to get themselves back into the game. What better way than at the end of the half for the defense to try to come up with a big play here? So Harris stays in. His second... Series 99 yards away. They're without James. They're going to throw complete. How about that call by the offensive coordinator? I feel like jumping up on top. I mean, that, that is a great call. Completely unexpected. Patrick Nix against every tendency he's ever shown as an offensive coordinator with a young quarterback backed up inside the one yard line, one on one coverage. He goes with a quick, easy throw and an accurate throw by the young quarterback. Nice call, Patrick Nix. There's the handoff and to the 20 yard line. Good run. And uh, so, Herbie, we're going to do. Uh, Get some bookkeeping out of the way. All right, here we go now. Herbie, I know you know the answer. Which quarterback gave Steve Spurrier his first SEC loss? One of the this greatest month? games in the 90s, Patrick Nix. Indeed. Patrick Nix calling plays for Miami. 36-33. Came down to the closing seconds. Here. Was it Frank Sanders? Yes, it was. Good memory. Yeah. Oh, my wheelhouse, Brent. Don't, don't, you want to go there. Short of the first down. So Herbie you, you tells tell you about it. Yeah, and uh, really classic Indy. Now watch Nix from the gun. Here comes Frank Sanders working over to the sideline. Touchdown. And I'll tell you what, the ball coach, he was a little. Oh, we almost boy. got the full visor throw. We saw that a lot last night. <laughs> Vanderbilt. Boy, what a play that was. Oh, that was a great, great game. game. So here he is now. First time he's been back in the swamp. Third down. 244. 
Gators would love to get it back. Canes want to keep moving. Middle. They go right for the first down. And Cooper. Greg Cooper from Memphis, Tennessee. I always like to talk about fullbacks when they make a block 30. Boom! Patrick Hill on Dunlop opens up just enough room that time for Cooper to get across and pick up that first down. Fullbacks don't get much love. And look at it. 5'9", 262 pounds. Ball up to Miami, 24. We've got 229 left in the opening half. The young man from Torrance, California. Gets down in front of his eyeball. Very conservative. Gators were ready. They jumped it for a two-yard loss. Cooper, the ball carrier that time. And Spikes makes the stop as we check in with Reese Davis. Brent, coming up on the Pontiac G6 halftime report, BYU extends the nation's longest winning streak, but not without some serious controversy at the end against Washington. The Buckeyes found a way to get by, and Wake Forest pulled one out just in the nick of time. Mark and Lou will join me. We'll talk ramifications all when you come back to the studio at halftime. See you in a bit. Yeah, Reese, I saw you show that highlight earlier tonight. I want to say that's ridiculous. Second down, you fans, if you haven't seen it, watch Reese and the gang at halftime. On the ground uh, as he makes the, uh, the diving reception from Harris over there with uh, 130 left and uh, not going to accomplish a whole lot throwing over there. Now, the best thing there is the ball is caught and the clock keeps moving. At this point, you're just trying to get out of here down center exactly. three. But you're right about that play this afternoon in Seattle. I, mean, I, I understand there's an emphasis on avoiding the individual celebration. That was a horrendous call by a Pac-10 official in was Seattle. It, was it a Pac-10? Yes. It was yeah. not West Pac-10. No. I didn't know who made the call. Awful call. One minute. Set the middle screen and dropped. Incomplete. Incomplete pass. And there's a penalty flag. Comes flying late on this now. Much as I like some of the play calling we've seen from Patrick Nix at this point, you're not going to pick up a first down on third and long with under a minute to go. Why not force Florida to use a timeout, run the football? Because now you're going to give Tim Tebow great field position, and you're going to give him two timeouts. And coach is not at all happy with up. Orlando Franklin. For him, penalty half to the goal. Fourth down. Half the distance and the fourth down now, and Orlando knows. Big fella. Learning. Randy Shannon, unmistakable leader of this uh, Kane team. Coming off Miami's poorest season in about three decades. Now from the end zone. Bosher blocked in the end zone. Going for the recovery of the... And it goes safety. Safety. We had to hold on to see if they were going to signal touchdown or safety. And it's a safety. And there's the emphasis on the punt team. There's Urban Meyer's baby. And they come through with a big time block. Jeff Demps, the world class speedster, comes in on it. And look at the guys coming off the field for Urban Meyer. They're all starters, running backs, defensive backs. They all fight to get on the punt team. You know why? Of Tell course, us why. because they get to eat first. That's right. They get taken care of full <laughs> season. They get the best. They get the best pick of all the T-shirts and all the different gifts. You fight and scratch and claw in Gainesville to get on the punt team. It's the most important thing on both sides. Punt return and the punt block. Demps, the young freshman, gets in, finds the seam, and then it's a race. Here comes another freshman, Rainey. Murphy's trying to come up with it. I thought nine, Murphy might have had it, but the ball let it get away. got loose, and it goes off the back end there. Could have been six. And now, let me see. We've got 47 seconds, and remember, they're going to get it back. Just talked about... The personal foul hurt him, but very surprised to see the selection of the pass, stopping the clock, moving him back deep. Now you still, you're still going to give Tim Tebow time here. Shame Miami has battled here in this first half. There he is, a young man. Dimps 
You do not want to get in a foot race with that young man up here in Gainesville. Uh -uh. I think we'd have to say he's the fastest. I think the only man that could beat him is named Bolt. Yeah. <laughs> the fastest player in college football. How about those guys when they were discussing Bolt when they watched <laughs> him in the Olympics? Uh, I mean, you get around speed, and the one thing they love to watch is that 100 meter and the 200 meter in the Olympics, man. They didn't miss any of that. Wasn't there a debate about T.O. if you had him at the 20 yard line? Yeah, there's any race starting Bolt, at the 20 and you race Bolt for 100. Did, did Could Bolt he catch T.O.? And those guys said to a man he, they would not catch T.O. with a 20 yard advantage. And then Timo said you could put Percy Harvin with a seven yard head start and he thinks he could hold off Bolt. I don't know. And you could give Dent maybe a one yard <laughs> start. Good. Here we come now. Brandon James. He's got breakout speed. Oh, Bosher with emphasis. After having one blocked, kicking a 50 yard field goal, shanking one, took out all kinds of frustration with that hit. Wait. A huge return, which you always know when James gets his hands on the ball. What I found interesting is after he returned, Urban Meyer ran down to the offensive line and almost started punching him. He was so excited trying to motivate them to try to put some points on the board here. The difference in this game, the punt team of Urban Meyer so far. Yep. As you said, his baby. That's it. Kane's going to get a timeout here. You always, you know, been around a lot of coaches through the years. And Herbie, let me, let me take you back. We're going to take a break here. The University of Miami is on the move. We're revealing the mysteries of the world from the eye of the hurricane to the human genome. We're creating oceans of knowledge and helping to shape citizens of the world. We're making a difference right now in the classroom, the laboratory, and on our playing fields. So keep watching us. The University of Miami, it's all about the U. Now you probably knew that uh, Dick Vermeil was the first official special team coach ever in the National Absolutely. Football League. George yeah. Allen used him with the Rams. But you remember Don James at Washington? Yeah. He was unbelievable. You go to his practice, you'd watch 45 minutes at the start of every practice. That's all he worked on was special teams. Nothing, nothing else. The coaches who I think do some of the best jobs stress special teams and uh, incomplete. So it'll be second down and 10. What do we got for time? Yeah, 35. Yeah, you're 35 seconds and you're still seeing Miami pressure Tim Tebow. When when Miami knows that Tim Tebow is going to be in a drop back situation yeah. without the play action, they have a beeline right to him because of the job that they're doing with the different looks. And that's how you get to him. We talked about that at the beginning of the show. Confusion based on mixing up your looks. And that's what Bill Young has done here in the first half. No question. Now, Tebow and the Gators did look at some of the Kansas tapes, trying to get an idea. Said they couldn't see much last week. It was pretty vanilla. But clearly, Bill Young saved something for Tebow and the Gators here tonight that they did not see when they were looking at Kansas. And I think there's an intensity right now, and it, you can almost feel from even up here, confidence. We've talked a lot about that, how important that is for Miami as a young team. Each possession, they're almost believing more and more that they can come in here and stop Tim Tebow. That time they sniffed out the screen before it even had a chance to develop. Would you agree with me that Robert Marr will be the starting quarterback in the I second so. half for the Kansas? Yeah, I think yeah. we'll see him. Third down. Three down. Play a little prevent. And he couldn't get the handle on it. Incomplete. That was Lewis Murphy. That time Tim Tebow had all the time that he needed. Makes a low throw, but at the same time, a throw that should have been caught by Lewis Murphy. He's the leader of the wide receivers. Comes across from your to the right, from the right to the left. Look at the window. Nice shot right in there. I think he might have felt the footsteps and the heat. The safety. Closing in on him. He drops the football. You know, in that time, Young had gone to the prevent and was trying to get everything in front of him. You know, he wasn't going to make the end zone. And uh, now it is the Canes who will get a chance to see if they can run this clock out as they don't even put anybody back. They're just going to let this one roll dead and they're going to get down inside of 15 seconds. Look at 9 to 3. You think about what most fans around the country thought about this game. 
And Miami didn't come in here to have any kind of morale booster by just staying around with the Florida Gators. They came in here right. to win. But for, if I'm a Miami fan, I'm pretty happy at 9-3. to three. Did a little research mm -hmm. since 1980. Yeah. Miami's been a three-touchdown underdog only twice. Since when? Both since 1980. Wow. Both times against the Seminoles, and both times Florida State won going away. Okay. Um, but you don't see it very often. They're going to they're gonna take it into the locker room. For the most part, the Canes can hold their helmets up high uh, so far, and uh, Tebow and the Gators got to make some adjustments with that offense. 9-3. Let's go to Aaron with Irving. All right, Coach. Well, your offense hasn't been able to really do anything since that opening drive. What's been the biggest problem? I think they're just playing hard, and uh, I think it's two good football teams going on. up front. We're not, uh, you know, we're not, we're getting beat up at the line of scrimmage right now, I think. I gotta, we're going to talk about it at halftime. We saw your emotion on the sidelines when your punt team got that safety. I mean, how much of a boost does that give your guys? We'll find out here in the second half. You know, we didn't answer on the uh, on the safety, uh, but uh, well, that's usually a big boost for our team. All right, Urban, thank you. Brent? All right, thank you, Aaron. And now, let's go to Reese Davis, Mark May, and Lou Holtz, folks, for the Pontiac G6 halftime report. Take it away, Reese. Tells just a little after 6.30 along the Pacific Network. I know some of you folks are just getting home, turning on the TVs, and yes, it is only 9-3. The Gators lead it by six. Two points to make here, though. Number one, Bill Young, the defensive coordinator of the Canes, has done a terrific job, and Urban Meyer's punt team has been the difference of the game so far. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've been blown away with the job that Bill Young and his young defensive staff and what they were able to do is all about confusion in the offensive line up front of the Gators and getting after Tim Tebow. The one way to stop Tim Tebow is to not allow him to attack you. You have to attack him, and that's what this young group of Miami players has been able to do. It's something we're not talking about much in this first half is the job they've done in the secondary of matching up with all that speed of the Gators. Yeah, very good point. Back to the goal line. They drive Brandon James to keep him on that side. He's got an alley. And again, it's Bosher making his second hit of the night on James. And James says, listen, no kicker is supposed to hit me like that. Little John wouldn't be a Miami, Florida game without a little of that, right? Got to have a little of that. That's two body slams for Bosher. Oh, yeah. James said, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so here comes Tim Tebow and this Gator offense. It's been quite, you go back and look at their scoring curve. They had 56 points last week, 35 and a loss to Michigan in the cap one bowl, 45 against Florida State, and here they are struggling tonight with nine after the first half. But they tend to be a second half team. Percy Harvin's run down, stretched out, not much doing. But into the boundary there, Percy Harvin had two touches in the first half. The first play here in the second half, they try to get his hands on a football. Most important stat. And Lee Corso talked about it at halftime. Miami possessing the football and keeping Tim Tebow on the sidelines. A pretty close to five minutes, a pretty good advantage there. But eventually, you've got to be able to put points on the board. I have a feeling this is one of those games where the crowd is completely out of the game. If Miami can keep the crowd out of the game, they've got a chance to score, and eventually they can maybe win this football game. Remember now, Florida has not beaten Miami since 1985. They've only played six times since. They got Tebow in trouble again. Forced that incompletion with more of the Bill Young pressure. Glenn Cook, he is moving his front seven around. He's famous for that. You know that, Kirk? And it's a, another look that they continue to show. You see the frustration on Tim Tebow over the top of your screen. Glenn Cook, the linebacker, this time lines up all the way up to the line of scrimmage. Nobody kicked to the outside to pick him up. And even though he didn't get the sack, he disrupted again the timing with Tebow and his receivers. And now it's third down and another obvious passing down. And he's not giving him the same look twice in a row. He'll go back to it eventually, but he keeps changing up and bringing different sorts of pressure. It's a veteran defensive coordinator. Closing in, Tebow steps away and completed. Is it picked off? No. Thought they might have had a shot at it there on the uh, ricochet. Cooper, the intended receiver, and Urban Meyer. And this uh, Florida coaches have got to be a little frustrated right now. As much as we talked about Tim Tebow being Superman, well, kryptonite to any quarterback is pressure. 
And you know, when you get after a quarterback, even if you don't come up with a sack, you get him to feel the pressure, and he's moving around in that pocket. He gets happy feet, and it disrupts his accuracy downfield. Collier is back. And that is a booming punt. There's that punt team again for Urban Meyer. They should seal him up short of the 20, but it's a terrific return by Collier. But down he goes at about the 13-yard line. You saw a great shot of defensive line coach Clint Hurt. Isn't that a great name for a defensive line coach over at Miami? <laughs> Clint <laughs> Hurt. And they're putting some hurt on him. And uh, now it is up to Nixon, the offense, to decide. We would think that Marv would come back. He opened the game for him and that... Uh, he would be the quarterback. There he is coming out. Here comes number nine. Remember the left hand, if you just joined us, injured in an automobile accident, mangled, could not play last year. A couple years ago, he was the player of the year. The year after Tim Tebow at Plant High School, Kirk, it was Marv who was the Mr. Football here in Florida, and he's the quarterback. And he settled down in the first half. Let's see how he gets started here in the second. Lock the call. Throwing on first down, caught four, 11 yards, and a first down. Put in the hands of Chris Zellner. Let's check in with Lisa. Well, Brent, I talked to Patrick Nick coming out of the locker room, and I said to him, Coach, I know you guys are doing exactly what you said you were going to do, but Robert Marv seemed to be in a groove. Why take him out? And he said, because he will be fresh now for the entire second half. And he said, more importantly, he got a chance to see what was going on. He thought he knew what was going on in those first three drives, but he really didn't. So now he knows what to do, and he will not be dead tired. Great shot of Lee Corso there. Looked like he wanted to send a play. <laughs> the scooter's fired. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, there are running back short. And uh, there he is. He's interested. He's not going back to the bus and putting his feet up now. Oh, no. No, he's staying. Look at him. He's like, excuse he, me, he's sir. He's getting out of the excuse way of the camera. He doesn't know. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. know what you're talking me. about. Excuse you me. know, I saw Ohio State. Tap him on the shoulder. I saw Ohio Tap State. Tap him on the shoulder. I said, hey. Coach. Scooter, wave to the camera. <laughs> he's been, he's like he's coaching. Look at him. Hands on the side. I, I got to tell a great anecdote about him here. This year. One Little I'll never man. forget when he was coaching Indiana. One of the great moments. Second down, 13. Look at him. Now Marv on a nice play fake on the roll. Throws in underneath the coverage. Going to be just a little short of that first down. Here comes a big third down. That's Matthew Travis Blake Benjamin. Terrific Travis upside Benjamin. out of Bill Glade. Another school over there that turns out some terrific football players. Keep moving the pocket with Robert Marv. He is very athletic, very comfortable moving to the outside off of the play action. That's important to be able to run enough so the play action will work, but move him to the outside where he can run or he can throw. We've seen that a lot in the first half, the combination of his, of his abilities. Interesting, third in the yard is in the shotgun. Yeah, exactly, and uh, Cooper is set out to the right, and they may have to burn one here. It looked like a lot of confusion yep. that time. Cooper wasn't too sure as he went out to the right. Hill was the fullback. They only need a yard. Well, we've got a quick minute uh, as they talk. Let me go back to Ohio State. The Buckeyes were behind today at uh, at the intermission. Were they? I didn't at, see yeah, that. Yeah. 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 Ohio, Ohio. <laughs> the Bobcats and Frank Solich. And all I could think of was Frank. Go out to the middle of the field and have a photographer take a picture of you with the scoreboard behind yeah. you. Because you know that's what Corso that. did when he was a coach at Indiana, folks. Remember, Indiana had never, ever led Ohio State at a halftime or the end of the game. He went out, had the team around him, and they took that picture. He and said, it was a classic. First touchdown in Bloomington. He's got Woody Hayes on the other sideline with the black hat on. Scores a touchdown. Calls timeout. Yeah, right. Calls timeout. Time calls the team photographer. Come over here. We're gonna. It brings the whole team over to line up in front of the scoreboard. You imagine Woody Hayes on the other sideline looking at. Oh, I'm looking over. That's a wizard. 49 to seven. Down marker and use it as a jammer. You know what I'm saying? They're down now, oh. folks. One yard needed. Still in the gun. He's a good runner. He's going to get it. Step out of bounds. Marv picks up the first down. <laughs> One of the coaches down there. And uh, Florida, of course, tried to recruit him. But, but the young man uh, knew that Tim Tebow was uh, pretty well entrenched here for the next couple of years. So uh, he moved on down with the Canes. And looks like they may have a good one. 
The big theme coming in tonight was how would the redshirt freshman Robert Marv and the true freshman Ja'Cory Harris handle this environment. And I know they're down nine to three, but I think their feet are on the ground. They've settled in. And as we've talked a lot about, they're making plays tonight. They're not losing because of the play of the quarterbacks. Not at all. They had a bad personal foul, which backed them up and uh, certainly helped set up the blocked punt for the safety. Handing off now, here's Cooper looking for daylight, stretching it. Stop just short of a first down on a good stop by Ahmad Black, and let's check in with Aaron. Hey, Florida's Charlie Strong, happy at all, Brent. Talk to the defensive coordinator coming out of the half. He said, we are not putting pressure on these young quarterbacks. In fact, we're not asking them to do anything hard at all, and we need to stop. We're missing some tackles, and more importantly, we need to stop the run. And Aaron, let me talk about this Miami offensive line against this defense. Jason Fox at left tackle. Orlando Franklin, he had the personal foul, but he's played well. Xavier Shannon, coach's son's the center. Figueroa and Youngblood along with Rutledge over on the right side. And this offensive line deserves credit here. Second down and short. The one thing, Kirk, that you have to say. Second time out already for already. Miami. More confusion. And Nix is not happy. That's a wasted timeout in a close ball game here in the second half. Number two. Now that is why Nix is not up in the booth. He told us that he wants to get down on the field, look the players in the eye. Right now the players are wishing that he was up in the booth. <laughs> Maybe you should go back upstairs, coach. Get a little too close. The germ killing Eclipse Gum Biggie Pack. Fresh breath in your car. Okay. 60 germ killing pieces. Seriously. The Eclipse Gum Biggie Pack now kills bad breath germs. Advanced fresh breath. Seriously. What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song And I'll try not to sing out of key Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends Yeah, I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends With a little help from my friends At Hampton, we love having you here. I love this junior banana split with a pineapple and strawberry. So good. I love that there's half a banana here because it means that somewhere in the world, someone has the other half of this banana. Maybe it's me. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe it's the local meteorologist. Oh. Dwayne Twill. Oh, it's the way he gives the seven day. Ooh. <laughs> 99 cent junior banana split now at sonic treat yourself to sonic sweetness for only 99 cents and stop in for happy hour half price fountain drinks and slushes every day from 2 to 4 p.m the germ killing eclipse gum biggie pack fresh breath in your car okay 60 germ killing pieces seriously the eclipse gum biggie pack now kills bad breath germs advanced fresh breath seriously in athletic competition and in the classroom, the SEC prepares its student athletes for life. I started swimming at the age of five in order to keep up with my older brother, but the lessons learned as an all-American swimmer for Auburn honed my true competitive spirit. As one of 12 nominees representing each SEC school, I am honored to be the 2008 McWhorter Female Scholar Athlete of the Year. Upon graduation, I will work toward my dream of becoming a doctor, filled with the memories of life in the SEC. The SEC, our future is now. This ESPN telecast available in high definition on ESPN HD. For Kirk Herb Street, I'm Brad Musburger. Welcome back to Gainesville, Florida. The Gators struck first, but it has been a struggle ever since. They lead it by six. Favored tonight by three touchdowns here against the Gators. Robert Marv, the redshirt freshman, buys time. Looks middle of the field incomplete. He threw back on the backside of his intended receiver that time and that's LaRon Bird number 47 showing a little moxie there rolls to his left off the play action probably could have run for the first down it's second about six inches had man coverage so instead of taking it he decides to take a shot downfield against the one-on-one -on -one coverage and throws the incompletion and now they've got to convert here on third and about half a yard power running formation Cooper is your behind Patrick Hill. Not going to get there. Great defensive line penetration. 
the defensive line coach this year for the Florida Gators is a name you might remember Dan McCarney McCarney works along with strong with the overall defense but McCarney works with these down linemen and they got in Marsh Cunningham and spikes the middle linebacker third and one and Brent that is a huge play after Miami picked up nine yards on first and ten to force the punt. What a fair catch back on the 12 yard line and uh, for Tebow and the offense will have it when you come back 10 24 left here in quarter number three in the swamp 9 3 Gators lead the Canes. A special ESPN Monday Night Football doubleheader starts Monday at 7. Introducing Taco Bell's new 89 cent Volcano Taco. With spicy lava sauce, it could be the spiciest taco ever. Wait, my Volcano Taco. <laughs> Don't look at me. Why pay more for heat when you can think outside the bun? You're right. We need a new TV. Just don't go overboard. I want it all. I want it all. I want it all. And I want it now. Text Chase for your credit card balance and decide what to spend in seconds. It's perfect. Real-time info matters. Chase what matters. I'm comfortable in jeans that are tough. I'm comfortable in jeans that last. I'm comfortable in Wrangler. Real comfortable. Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. Built tough with long-lasting heavyweight denim. Built comfortable with relaxed fit. Satisfaction guaranteed. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. Benefits from Unum can help maintain your lifestyle if you're ever injured or ill, so you can protect the most valuable asset of all, you. Unum. Better benefits at work. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by ESPN Game Plan. See the most college football every Saturday. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. 25,000 square feet of new weightlifting equipment and room and look at those monitors and sound system and high def TVs. Wow. So here's Tim Tebow who has thrown six straight incompletions before they completed that and uh, this crowd uh, Kirk has mentioned several times how quiet it is but folks you are looking at a new record here in the swamp. That's right. We've got 90,833. Yeah, for most of the night, for the swamp now, yep. it's been quiet. I don't think they feel threatened. I, I, this morning on game day, we talked about it. It was a fun show, good crowd, but throughout the day, you know when you feel like you're going to win a game? The crowd just isn't the same, and I don't think they feel threatened today coming into this game, but they better wake up. There's Harmon, first down. The elusive just caught it in stride and picked up the first for the Gators. It's nice to see Percy Harvin back in this lineup and just at 100 percent. He told us in a meeting we had with him yesterday because we were all concerned thinking you can ease back into the lineup. But he said I'm ready to go. You know with my body the kind of shape that I'm in. I feel like I can have as many touches as the coaches are willing to give me. And as fast as this team is Percy Harvin's probably their number one difference maker. So here comes first and ten from the pistol formation. And then he rattles to Rainey for another first and ten. So I look at a couple of the speedsters back to back. First Harvin and then Rainey. You know, Brent, we have to go all the way back to the opening drive when Florida picked up great field position and went 35 yards for a quick touchdown. And after that, it's, it's really been a bit of a struggle from that point on. Look at that touchdown. And then the adjustments have been made by Bill Young, the Miami defensive coordinator. The pressure has been there. and. Right now, it's a matter of time until we see the Tim Tebow get on fire or Miami continue to shut him down. 
Last two plays, they've taken it out of Tebow's hands, and uh, they'll let him throw this time. He's got a man wide open, and he overthrew him. He had Lewis Murphy wide open on the sideline. The freshman, Harris, was the defensive back over there, but he overthrew him. Yeah, he, I think there was a, a bit of confusion there with Tim Tebow and his receiver because as Tim Tebow released the football, he had Murphy making a cut just a little bit late, and you can see, see if Tim Tebow has a chance to say anything to him. He's not going to have a chance to talk to him, but I, think it was a, I don't think he missed the throw. I think it was more a confusion that time. But he did break free away from the young freshman corner. Another well, Coach Shannon's veterans is back on the field. Randy Phillips has checked into that secondary. It's second down and 10. There's the quarterback draw with Tebow, and he's down at the 45 yard line. This will leave him with about a third and five here, Kirk. They'll call that play whenever they get into that empty look. And Tim Tebow is back there all by himself. They want to basically just match the numbers. You have five offensive linemen. You have five people inside the boxed area. They feel like you can't stop Tim Tebow from running the football, but you can see the closing speed of Miami and how quickly they came in to shut down that run. Needs five. Going to swing it out and short and tripping was Demps did not catch it in stride and he's short of midfield and that brings up fourth down for Urban Meyer and Urban's reaching over for it looks like the punt team the offense wants to stay out let's see what happens here Tim Tebow very adamant with his uh, enthusiasm to want to go for it but Urban Meyer in my opinion making a wise decision yeah, with the way stopped. this game is gone ball no, no, inside no. No, your own 50-yard line. You, you play that percentage. Yeah. Plus, the oh, fact, yeah. plus the fact your punt team has given you this lead. And this one's out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. He's still coming up the field to the sideline to the 27-yard line where the field judge marked that one out of bounds. The referee pointing at him, signaling where it went out. Tebow trying to convince Irvin to go. No way, Jose. I'm Mr. T, and this is my Night Elf Mohawk. Cut, T, there's no such thing as a Night Elf Mohawk. Shut up, fool! Like I was saying, my Mohawk storms through mighty forests on his frost saber. My Mohawk... T, it's a warrior, not a Mohawk. Well, maybe Mr. T hacked the game and created a Mohawk class. Maybe Mr. T's pretty handy with computers. Had that occurred to you, Mr. Condescending Director? I'm Mr. T, and I'm a Night Elf Mohawk. What's your game? World of Warcraft. Try it for free at Warcraft.com. Rated T for T. This week on Sunday NFL Countdown, are the Pats still feeling the effects of the Super Bowl hangover? And how Tony Romo likes being the paparazzi's new target. I'm not good looking already. Now it's going to be even worse. Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. on ESPN. Monday, Aaron Rodgers makes his debut against Adrian Peterson and the Vikings. Then the Broncos take on the Raiders. ESPN Monday Night Football returns with a special doubleheader starting Monday at 7. Think you've got what it takes to be a rock star? Get ready to become a rock legend with Guitar Idol. Jam to your favorite classic rock songs anytime, anywhere. To activate, simply match your strumming to the correct tempo and Guitar Idol adds in the riffs. Stop playing in the riff stop too. Master each riff on your own. Just play in time to bring the song to life. Adjust the volume and show off your stuff. Rock out to the riffs. Now you're in control. Use the earbuds or plug into speakers for a more intense session. Call or log on to get Guitar Idol with two tracks, Jumpin' Jack Flash and Satisfaction. Plus, you'll also get the Guitar Idol earbuds and wrist strap. But we're not finished. We'll also include a second Guitar Idol with two more classic tracks, Wild Thing and Smoke on the Water. Plus the lyrics to all the songs, absolutely free. You get all this for only $19.95, plus shipping and handling. You can call 1 800 709 4470. Guitar Idols 1995 plus 899 shipping and handling. Must be 18 or older to order. <laughs> ah, we welcome you back to the swamp. The Spanish Moss, the Bull Gator. Is that Albert? I, 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 I believe so. <laughs> You've been here more than I have lately. Here comes a great fake by Mark to Thomas. They bid on it. 
Cunningham finally tracks him down, but not before an eight-yard game. This is the best field position, Kirk, that Miami's had in some time. And what a way to take advantage of that with the first play, again, with the freshman quarterback settling down, making plays with his feet and his arm. We expected that from Tim Tebow, but Robert Marv showing what he can do with a nice run. Good genes. His daddy, Eugene Marv, was an NFL linebacker for 12 years with the Bills, the Chargers, and the Buccaneers. He raised a tough one. He sure did. He's, he's playing quarterback like a linebacker. Thomas, middle, reaching for the first down. And let's take a look with this youngster from Plant High School in Tampa. <laughs> did you see the defensive lineman put it back about a half a yard? Well, it's, it's been a combination of a lot of different things. And more importantly, I think you can see we've had some good looks at his eyes. He's settled down. He's providing leadership. I sense from up here that the Miami Hurricane offensive players believe in him and his ability. And I think they're feeding off of his confidence. And it's rare to see that from a redshirt freshman making his first start on the road. But he's got that bravado that I think they're feeding off of and believing in. A good spot by the defensive lineman. Third and short. Thomas. And on second effort, picks up the first down for the Canes. Looked like he was stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Now, remember, the story of the offense is the fact that Javaris James, with an injured ankle, left early in this game and will not play here tonight. Thomas replaced him, and he's done a terrific job. What an effort. Dunlop penetrates eight. Look how he's right there to make the play. And Thomas's vision and quickness instincts to cut back inside away from Dunlop picks up a valuable first down for Miami. Remember now, Florida has not beaten Miami since 1985. They've only played six times, but the Gators have not broken through. Thomas picks his way back. Gained only about a yard. And let's go to Reese Davis for a Sports Center in-game update. All right, Brent, remember last year, Louisiana Monroe beat Alabama. They're trying to do it to Arkansas tonight on the road. Gary Frazier going in to make it 24-6. Hogs are rallying now. It's 27-21 in the fourth. Alabama's had a poor game offensively. Defense special teams carrying the pass. Tulane and Mississippi State bounces back. So a look at some interesting stories around the SEC, and here are the Gators with their hands full against Miami of the ACC. Throwing it underneath, well short of a uh, first down that time, and that was Diedrich Epps making the catch, and Black, who returned an interception for a touchdown last week for the Gators, making the stop. He's a good defensive back. Tough start for Bobby Petrino in Arkansas. Got to try to pull out another one, huh? Yeah. Tough sledding to get him. Nick Saban can tell you about those. Uh, <laughs> the it's hard to get kids motivated sometimes for those teams that appear to be lesser opponents. And then it catches up to you. Well, let's see what we got here now. Third and six. Thomas is the running back. Let's see if they move Marv out of his pocket. Show a couple of tight ends. Marv sets, goes deep, double covered, through the coverage to the freshman Johnson, incomplete, and there were two defenders right there, including Wright. Major Wright was there along with Jenkins. That's the first time tonight from up here we've seen Robert, Robert Marv look like a young quarterback. He didn't allow the play to develop, and he basically just took a shot and threw it down to Johnson, who's double covered, didn't have a chance to make a catch here. But he had some other receivers that he could have looked at to try to squeeze it in a one-on-one -on -one coverage. Well, here's young Bosher. He's had himself an eventful night. One high, no fair catch signal this time. And as a result, he gets ripped back there. You know, speaking of the catch, Kirk, here's tonight's good hands flashback presented by Allstate. Fullback James Jones, quarterback Wayne Peace. This was back in 1982. Watch the one-handed grab here, folks. Oh, yes, indeed. 17-14 nice. Florida. All right. Way back. All right, you're on a hot streak. Okay, what Who was think? the Miami quarterback that night? Who was the losing what, what'd quarterback? What did you say what year that was? Who was the 1982. I'm going to say, hold on a second now. Hold on a second. How good is Okay. A tough one. Joe Paterno wanted to make it the linebacker. I'm going to say Bernie. No. Jim Kelly. I gave you the 10. You did. Oh, come you on. did. Try to help you out. Oh. Here we go. Whistle before, huh? Flag comes down. Bernie can't play linebacker. No, no, exactly. <laughs> Bernie goes up. Uh, 
D tackle. <laughs> I love Bernie. <laughs> Prior to the snap, ball start, 55 on offense, penalty five yards, down main front. That's against Mike Pouncey, and let's go to Aaron. Brent, we just saw the footage, Florida-Miami, the heated rivalry. You mentioned the Gators haven't beaten the Hurricanes since 1985. It was funny, talking to Tim Tebow, Percy Harvin, a lot of the younger guys who said, you weren't even born when this rivalry was going on. I mean, we know the stories, and, you know, asking Urban Meyer, he said he wasn't going to preach too much about the rivalry because Florida plays so many big teams throughout this season. But, Herbie, you mentioned during warm-ups, you saw that look in Tebow's eyes. And just watching them on the sidelines, they are jacked for this game. I mean, Coach Meyer was so Please tight during practice. One thing, Aaron, about his eyes, I think he was motivated because I think I think Miami took this field with a bit of an attitude saying, we're coming back. Miami, the U is back. And I think Florida looked at that thinking, who are you to come on our field like this? But after about three quarters of play, there was a backed play. it out. There was a yeah. about the U. That Coach Urban Meyer did not like reading from one of his players. And trust me, they read it often. And that is the young man, Murphy, who uttered it. Now, let's take a look at this, folks, because this major play in the state. We're the U, Murphy said. I don't refer to them as the U. I refer to them as Miami. If the U is for university and winning championships, we're the U. They're Miami. And that's what I call them. Okay. <laughs> Probably not the best thing to do. No, not the week of the game. No. Maybe if, if you win this, maybe next week. Yeah. 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 See <laughs> Until 2013. That's okay. Because Miami <laughs> is one of these teams that you know Randy Shannon, the way he's recruiting. They're gonna, he's bringing them back. It's much like Nick Saban, a matter of three and a half. There's Harvin. Got it. There he is. That, I think that's the second time. Did the Kirk yep. did that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the first time we saw him. I, I was just going to say, on Randy Shannon, you know it's a matter of time until he's going to bring it back. You have a young football team. You don't need to do anything to add motivation to their fire when they come in here. But Percy Harvin getting his hands on the football, something that we knew we would see. I think we thought we would see a little bit more of it, but that is not the case. Dan Mullen and Urban Meyer felt like rotating Percy Harvin and Jeff Demps and Chris Rainey. And all, Brandon James and all these weapons that they have is, would wear Miami's defense out eventually in the second half. They'd like to shake Young Demps loose if they could. And tripped up, couldn't get it done, and uh, let's check in with Lisa. Well, Brent, just a few minutes ago, Robert Marv came off the field and went directly to the trainer who stretched him out. They were working on his calf, so I walked over and asked him if he was okay. He said, yeah, I'm fine, just cramping up a little bit. So Gatorade, stretching him out, he should be fine to go back in. Yeah, it's, uh, it's humid, as it uh, normally is down here in Florida this month, and uh, we wish everyone well in the next 10 days, two weeks with the uh, hurricanes. Who knows where they're going to and a touchdown. Second down now and 10 yards to go for the uh, for the Gators. That's Demps going in behind Tebow who stands up and delivers. And on a second effort, Aaron Hernandez showed us why the coaches like him. Terrific effort after the catch by the sophomore from Bristol, Connecticut. Eight yards, Kirk. The motion here by Rainey actually takes the linebacker, Cook, away from the play. And when Cook leaves, he vacates his own well-designed play. Hernandez not only makes the catch, as Brent just said, this is what the coaches have been talking about. And with Cornelius Ingram going down with an injury, number 81, Hernandez, a sophomore, has to provide this big playability. Great point on, uh, on Cornelius. Uh... And as uh, Tebow's in trouble, he's got to get it off quickly, and he does to the underneath man again, and that's Hernandez. And uh, because you you were telling me that Ingram, big big time tight end, who they uh, lost absolutely, the and, and they had a lot of uh, plays that they wanted to use him in a way where they would disguise if he's a tight end or if he might be an H back or a slot, making it his versatility would make it very tough on a defense. And they don't have another player on this team that has the size and speed of Cornelius Ingram, and they feel the guy that's closest to that is Aaron Hernandez. Boy, you can see it a couple plays ago when he got to the open field. He made some people miss. Second down at 13. As you watch the Gators, even though they've struggled here, Kirk, there's a lot of weapons on that football team. There's the option right now. Tebow, he was keeping this all the way. 
He was not keeping an eye on Rainey. He was looking to run this. And he wanted to punish one of those backers on that play. And uh, Nicholas, JoJo Nicholas coming up. But, but from up here, you, you look down and you see Tim Tebow here almost out, uh, out of the third quarter. You cannot get to the sideline against a Miami Hurricane defense. I don't care if they're younger defense or they're older. They have speed, and it's tough to go sideline to sideline and pick up big yards. And now they're going to again face this third down and long. This is where, if you haven't watched a lot of the game, this is where Miami has confused Florida's offensive line and gotten pressure on Tebow. Florida's only 4-10 on, on third downs. Stands, delivers, hot grab. Incomplete, waved off. I thought that Carl Moore had it. I thought for a moment he made the catch and might have been pushed out down there, but uh, the official was right on top of it. He was looking right at this play. Again, in the college game, it's where your foot comes down. In fact, I think they changed the rule this year in the NFL, too. It's yeah, not a great if your call. foot is going to come down. It's does it come down? Can you actually see his foot down? That was Randy Phillips over there making that play. And I don't even know if he possessed the ball at any point. It's a good call by the officials. He was right there to make the call. It's a really good look at it, too. It's going to be under review, I guess, Brent. We'll see a couple different angles to see if his foot ever did touch the ground and if he did possess the football. It's a great shot here. His foot never comes down until it's out of bounds. Yeah, you know, uh, Randy Phillips, one of those veterans from Bill Glades, he's a senior defensive back, and uh, he was going to be the leader. And, and I thought from our first replay that the foot was out of bounds. Yes. Kirk? Oh, it's a great look right here. Nope. And uh, the ball even comes out. But I, his, his not only is... Now, this is it, what's going to happen in the NFL. You know, they changed that rule. There's no force out in the NFL. Right. This is what you're going to see DBs do. Right. You get in the air oh, yeah, on the side. Take Hello. You out. Take you out. You're going to get ripped up. Yep. I mean, there's some safeties in the NFL now. Oh. Tomorrow you're going to see them lighten guys up you're on right that side. That. I mean, I, the one thing about the NFL's rule that I want to see are more guys going to get hurt. Because they're going to go for the knockout thing, shot. You know, I don't mind the rule, but uh, you know, here's the young man, uh, Carl Moore, and. Uh, they're still uh, they're still Brent, discussing this. Brent, if we could go back and look at the last angle where he from behind the end zone you could see where it looked like his elbow had a chance it's not just the feet obviously his back could come down any part of his body could be in bounds and does any part of his body touch in bounds oh that elbow you know is that, then, that, then, but then the ball's coming out as his elbow is touching did the elbow I think that's come in why there? that's why there's they're Whoa, looking at so that, many different angles so it doesn't have to obviously just be his foot. Yeah, it's the replay guys from the SEC, and uh, you, know, you know they're taking their time as they uh, as they look at this. From here, it looks like inconclusive. I mean, it's just so hard to tell. Did he possess the ball? Is the elbow down? I don't know if you have a real clean, crisp look to say, without question, let's turn it and call it a catch. Uh, and there's. Uh, mm -hmm. There's the incident where uh, we've got an injured receiver going out, and uh, this is causing a little, you know, it's, uh, it's the replays running back. It's a big play in this well, game. I was going to say, be pretty... it's third down and eight or nine, third and nine here. If they make this catch, they're inside the 10, first and goal. And if they don't make the catch, they have a choice to kick a long field goal, about a 50-yarder, or they're going to try to go for it. One way, or one way or another, this is a huge play for both teams. I don't even know if he ever really controlled the ball as his body came down. The runner had possession of the ball. The left elbow touched at the five-yard line. Wow. They did say it. Uh, interesting. I thought that one. Yeah, from behind the end zone. With the elbow. I just could not tell the relationship of the foot with the elbow at that time, but that the elbow is from behind appeared to come down in bounds. Take a look now at this left elbow right here. Watch just the elbow. Yep. You know what? I think that is a good overturn. Close call it, from uh, here. Close call for me. You could disagree. I, I, could, I, 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 I'm not comfortable 100% in turning that around, but hey, they felt comfortable, made the call, and 
Canes, uh, the Canes Shannon, fans are throwing some things on the field at him. Shannon did not go ballistic over on that sideline. He had, was already talking to the D. And 28-yard uh, catch on third and nine. Got debris coming down now from the, the Florida is right in front of some of the Miami Hurricane fans, and they're not happy about the call. And big, big call in this game. I guess uh, we go back to what Kirk said. Was it conclusive as Tebow rolls left now, putting pressure on that defense? Can he run it in? Cannot. Tried to throw it at the end. <laughs> you can almost say that was intentional grounding, the way that ball came shooting out of there. But uh, let's see what happened here. Well, the ball did go. He's outside of the pocket. He's behind the line, and he did throw the ball. Receiver there. And once you once you get outside of the pocket, you can throw it anywhere you want now, as Hernandez, long as it goes across. And, and, and Hernandez, Hernandez is right there. right there. But as long as it goes across the line, he's fine. But it, the way he you never know when he's like Doug Flutie in some ways. You just never know what you're going to get with him. No. He never gives up on a play. Demps is going to the locker room, the Florida locker room. He's leaving the field. I just saw him go out through the end zone. Second down and goal coming up here for Urban Meyer. We've got the final seconds in the third quarter. An instant replay review. And turning over a call on the field has resulted in giving the Gators a golden opportunity. And that middle of that Miami defense Equal to that task is McCarthy, number 44, right in the middle of that play. What a hit that time. McCarthy and number three, Glenn Cook, who's been all over the field for this Miami defense. What a contact there with Keystone Moore. The fourth quarter still to come, and both are claiming it belongs to us. We shall see. 9-3, Florida leads Miami. ESPN360.com, your online home for live college football. Whatever the season, when a storm gathers, so do we. The State Farm Catastrophe Team, a full-time force of 2,500 people whose only mission is to be there in times of crisis. Working with local State Farm agents to bring help and hope to more people than any other company. And we'll be there for you, too. The finest leather boots are at Big Bill's Boots. <laughs> Introducing the bigger, tastier chicken strips with our new Chick-fil-A sauce. You don't believe in miracles? You pick up a check one day, then I'll believe in miracles. <laughs> Academy Award winner Robert De Niro. Most people respect the badge. Everybody respects the gun. Academy Award winner Al Pacino. Where I come from, it was either a gun and a badge or a hard hat and a hammer. The two greatest actors of our generation. He could lose it all at taking his case. You want to risk that? Yeah. Have are together at last. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Righteous Kill, rated R, starts September 12th. I'm Allison Felix. It's 5.30 a.m., and this is Workout Poppin'. Hey, what's up, early birds? Y'all want to test out some Adidas shoes from Dick's? Oh, nice. Sometimes, you just got to take it outside. Come on, guys. How far are we going? How far can you go? A clear head starts with your feet. Let's go. You don't get this at the gym. The Test Round 28 promotion, going on now at Dick's Sporting Goods. You know, scientific tests have proven that when you drink Dr. Pepper slowly, the 23 flavors taste even better. Hey, I get it, because half my life's been in slow motion. Watch this. Slower is better. Trust me, I'm a doctor. We welcome you back to ESPN College Football now. Primetime is presented by Hampton 
hotels. So this is your third down. They got the ultimate third down weapon here. Third down and goal as a direct snap to him. The run backwards, throws for the end zone. Harvin up and he's out incomplete. Now they're going to call a penalty on Phillips. Phillips has been in the thick of it. Anytime as a defensive back, you are catching up with a wide receiver, your head turned away from the football, more often than not, the official's going to make that call. Number six on the defense, counting in place at the two yard line. Randy First Shannon goal. saying the ball is not catchable. But Phillips catching, trying to catch up to Harvin, gets to him before the football. Oh, it's not, it's catchable. Ball hit him in the hands. But Phillips gets there, and because he's in a chase mode, every single time, officials right on top of it will make that call. And a big third down conversion here. Now it's first and goal for the Gators. And they spot that ball just inside the three yard line. They give themselves an extra blocker for T-ball and it was read perfectly by Stephen Wesley. Nothing doing that time. They loaded up the attack and Wesley was equal to it. They brought in Jamal DeVoe, a big linebacker to get in front of Tim Tebow because of his size. But I'm going to tell you, Urban Meyer said this walking off at halftime to Aaron Andrews. We're getting beat up front. That was another example of Miami's defensive line penetrating and wanting it more than the Florida Gator offensive line. Hurry up! Hurry up! Get set! Four, Got to hurry up with the clock. Tebow again, not going to get in. Tebow has tremendous courage to go inside the tee to this Miami Hurricane defense. And Fred, I know that's who he is. I know that he is Superman. But as he goes inside and he starts to twist and turn his body, those safeties are coming right in at his shoulders and at his helmet to try to knock him out. Am I right he did not rush for a touchdown last week? I don't believe he did. No. I don't think so. No. So what, he what are the odds here on third and short of Tim Tebow running, running again? He does not have a rushing touchdown, and he's only got four seconds to get this off, and they're going to have to burn one. Kind of out of sorts here these yeah, last couple of plays. last couple of plays have not been smooth down there. Yep. Agreed. You know? Uh, let's, uh, let's talk about... Uh, any possible frustration now you know Tebow is uh, such a high class young man and to, to sit and talk to him uh, is a treat and a pleasure and uh, he's just one of the finest young men we've been around but yeah you know he's so used to stepping on into the end zone throwing touchdown passes and now here we are in the second half of the second game do yeah. you think there's any frustration well, I know that talking to him this week that one of the things that he is going to really focus on is not getting caught up in the numbers yeah. because Hawaii didn't have great numbers for this game he doesn't have great numbers people locally people nationally are going to compare his numbers from last year to this year and a great year for Tim Tebow is not winning a Heisman it's winning a national championship and an SEC championship and having more than nine wins in what they did a year ago. So his numbers are not going to be what they were last year. And the challenge for him is to not try to live up to that standard. Let the game come to him and don't feel like he has to live up to a standard that was unprecedented before he did it last year. Yeah, it was unbelievable. That's tough. Produced That's tough 55 to touchdowns, yep. uh, running and throwing, and uh, the first sophomore in history to win the Heisman Trophy. And, here he is with a third and goal, and Bill Young sets that defense. Option look this time, and they pitch to Harvin. Touchdown!
Jonathan Phillips adds the extra point. The Gators have so many ways and so much speed to put pressure, especially inside the 10 yard line. Somebody like Harvin can take the pitch from Tebow and step in. Gators lead at 16 3. In a world overwhelmed by high gas prices, come four heroes. Armed with MyVet technology from Mitsubishi, Lancer, Gallant, Eclipse, Outlander. They are the phenomenal four. All equipped with Mitsubishi's four-cylinder MyVec engine, giving you fuel efficiency without sacrificing performance. Four cars, four cylinders, zero compromises. Visit your Mitsubishi dealer today. Transformed by colors so vibrant, they twist the very fabric of your being. And sounds so pure, you don't just hear them, you become them. By a world so beyond anything you've ever experienced, nothing will ever be the same. The new Kuro, now blacker than ever. Hey, Mary's phone. Mary doesn't have AT&T, which means we've got no bars here in this podunk little town we just moved to. So thanks for the call about how Michael Phelps is right down the street, signing autographs, taking pictures, telling hilarious stories about how much he loves Chinese food. Yeah, we're not going to get that message. One day we'll look back at this and laugh. Yes. Or cry! For the best coverage, switch to AT&T. More bars you in more places. Coming up on SportsCenter, more from Saturday's Upset Watch. Did BYU benefit from an official's mistake? And how ready will Brett Favre and Tom Brady be for Sunday's openers? Plus a walk-off grand slam in extras on SportsCenter. Now Miami trails it by a couple of touchdowns with 13-19 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Tebow in the offense just puts seven more on the board, and here comes the kickoff. It'll be fielded inside the five-yard line by Hill. Goes across the 20 and short of the 30-yard line, down at about the 27-yard line. Herbert, let's go back to the TV. Well, Brent, this is option football. This is Urban Meyer football, where you can have Tim Tebow come down and pitch to Harvin, who's coming in motion. What I love about this play isn't so much what Tim Tebow does. Nice pitch, but how about his teammates of Percy Harvin? A block here by Cooper, a block here by Hernandez, and a big block right there. Watch little Brandon James and what he's able to do in sustaining his block to allow Percy Harvin to get to the corner. Nice job by Brandon James. Yeah, 5'7", 186. Open the zone. You said he was little, man. <laughs> <laughs> Is he? Marv hands it off and... Uh, Lit up after a one-yard game. We check in with Reese Davis. Brett, the end of the Arkansas-Louisiana-Monroe game, and Arkansas in the waiting moments. Casey Dick going to D.J. Williams for the touchdown to put the Hogs ahead, but Monroe wasn't finished. Jeremy Jeter for the win, and it's a little wide right, and Arkansas survives in the final two minutes for the second straight week, 28-27. Like you said, Craig Bobby Petrie was living on the edge. Marth throws, diving reception, and it is complete. Farkasen, Kane Farkasen, make, no, check it. Hankerson, I thought it was 82. Let me correct myself on that. Let's see if he caught Wait, this ball. If he gets his hands, ball's thrown down, hands get down, turn his body, protect the football. Nice catch by Hankerson. The sophomore, 6'3", 215 pounds out of Fort Lauderdale. Made a huge catch for Miami. He and that man right there, number 21, great, great friends, right. Played together in high school down in Broward County. There is the completion again, and that is Hankerson. So back-to-back -back receptions. Number 16, A.J. Jones, next to tackle. A four-yard game. Under 12 minutes to, get, uh, to go in his football game and down by 13. Miami obviously 
They can't afford to get field goals at this point in the game. They're thinking about driving the length of the field and putting six points on the board. They have to do that as the time continues to be their worst enemy. Second down and five. Powering up the middle with McNeil. He's a sophomore running back. And again, uh, if you joined us late, James. One of the best running backs out with an ankle injury early and hasn't played since. Think about this Florida defense. We talked so much about Miami tonight, but after winning the national title in 06, last year they, they were breaking in nine new starters. They were young, they couldn't rush the quarterback, they couldn't cover, they allowed about 259 yards a game through the air. They struggled in stopping teams from running the football. They feel they're going to be better. They looked a lot more mature when we were in practice the other day, and they're playing pretty well on their own right tonight. Xavier Shannon over the ball, going to snap it. Incomplete, and Hankerson, the intended receiver, and he should have had it over there. He's he was, dropped a couple on yep. Marv tonight. He, he was open, and if he's able to hold on to this, it's a first down. He's working against Janoris Jenkins, another true freshman. This one for Florida. He's able to hold on to that football and lean, fall forward for a yard. That's another first down. This is that point in the game when you've got to really be careful for Miami with Brandon James on the return. And he's just going to let it go. Another high punt. Beautiful by Bosher. Drops it down inside the five-yard line where it's going to be down by Miami. So the young man here tonight, Matt Bosher, he's had an eventful evening, that's for sure. Fine punt that time. For great college football, order ESPN Game Plan today. What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song and I'll try not to sing a key. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. Yeah, I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. With a little help from my friends. At Hampton, we love having you here. With Papa John's 14 unique taste creations on our specialty menu, you might say that specialties are our specialty. Get a large specialty pizza, just $12.99 each. Call or click PapaJohns.com. 14 unique tastes, all at one place. This season, transform your baseball experience. MLB Extra Innings from DirecTV. Bring your favorite teams and players right into your living room with up to 80 out-of-market games a week. Put every pitch, every hit, and every play into your rotation today. MLB Extra Innings from DirecTV. Order now for just one payment of $59. Call 1-800-GET-SPORTS. When applying to college, 86% of students prefer to visit schools without a parent. This is why. Road trip! Road trip! <laughs> oh, no. From Walt Disney Pictures. How's the daddy-daughter bonding going? <laughs> Great. Just don't embarrass me, okay? How can I embarrass you? Melanie, I got your lemonade. I, 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 I. Oh, sip on that. College road trip. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by Aflac. Ask about it at work. We are Kappa Alpha House at the University of Florida. Beta Zeta Chef, established in 1904. How's your Greek? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a comparison of the quarterbacks. And uh, uh, Kirk, you said during the commercial, I agree with you. If Miami's going to get in this, they need to stop them right now. And this will be second down and 10. As Tebow does not hook up with Lewis Murphy. Murphy has uh, struggled a little bit as a wide receiver tonight. Yeah. He you has. Know? Yeah, and, and what's what's interesting is he is uh, he's the leader of the group. There's so many young players. That Lewis Murphy comes back this year as a senior. The best route runner, the guy, the kind of the, the anchor who all the young the young receivers look up to. And you're going to have nights like this. He's got to be able to shake it off and continue to be that leader for this team, especially in a tight game. Yeah, tossed it to him six times and had only one completion. Second and ten. 
Off the play fake, dropping it off to Hernandez. And he is to the 12-yard line. McCarthy and Cook making the stop. And uh, looks like we've got uh, Cook, Glenn Cook, the linebacker, the senior from Hollywood, Florida. Looks like uh, he's shaking up here. Talk to, we've talked about Glenn Cook a lot tonight. Sixth year foot injury last year kept him out of the 07 season. What a great game he has played tonight. As the uh, medical staff is out there, let us uh, break away. Let's check in with uh, Reese Davis. All right, Brent, want to keep you up to date on the Central Florida South Florida game going on. 15 seconds to go, tied at 24. Delbert Alvarado tried to win it for USF, who had coughed up a 14 point lead in the final three minutes. Alvarado couldn't, so we go to overtime on a third and 10. South Florida with the ball in overtime. Matt Grothy, the Taurus Johnson, 31 24. Keep you up to date on what the Golden Knights do when they have it. Well, good one. 31 24 OT, huh? So we'll check in on. Uh, on what they did with Reese, uh, did where are you going to be next Saturday night, Kurt? Uh, I think I'll be out at the L.A. Coliseum. You got the extra with my tickets? Friend. I'm trying. I need three more. <laughs> Can I tell you something? You know, I know it's a big game. Yeah. I got a cameraman asking me for a ticket. <laughs> Here we are, folks. <laughs> oh, Ohio good. State struggling today. USC idle. 8 Eastern, just a little neighborhood tussle out there in the uh, in the Coliseum. Um, USC, I would assume, would hold on to number one. I was a little concerned about Ohio State with the Gators, but uh, the Gators here 16 3. Maybe they will stay at three. We'll, we'll see how the voters view everything. Third down and three for Tebow. He attacks that perimeter, and there's the Yunker. James gives him a first down. I get so excited. I know Percy Harvin. I know there's Chris Rainey. I know there's Jeff Demps. And there's something about number 25 in a blue and orange when he gets his hands on the football. A little screen to the outside, glorified run, really. Great blocking again downfield by the receivers. The tight end, Hernandez, is downfield. Riley Cooper giving effort. And all Brandon James needs, as we see all the time on punt returns, is just a little seam, and he accelerates 15 or 20 yards downfield in a hurry. That's more than running back alongside Tebow, and they're going to keep this thing in the air. Got a man wide open. Murphy this time slammed from behind by Sharpton. Not Al, but Daryl and a personal foul. This is where you start to see a little bit of mental fatigue and a little bit of immaturity right now. Number 96 on the defense, 15-yard penalty, added on to the end of the run. First down. Antonio Dixon with a late shot, but this is broken. This is broken coverage by Miami, which we've not seen at all tonight. Dixon comes through after Timbo throw, Tebow throws the ball. Obvious 15-yard penalty, but look how open Murphy is downfield. Miscommunication back in the secondary that time by the young Miami defense. So the Gators are back inside the red zone and Canes back on their heels here in the fourth quarter. At practice, Florida appeared to be a very well-conditioned football team, and that may be showing right now in the fourth quarter. Turn a strike to the end zone. Got the touchdown, went right back to Lewis Murphy. This may be his best pass of the night, Kurt. The few times that the play developed the way it was intended, he was in rhythm, he was in, had great balance, right. and when he steps in with good footwork into his throw, he throws the football as well as anybody in the country. And there's the receiver, the leader we talked about. Yeah, he came up with yeah, two big catches. Time, Murphy, yeah. Right when he said, where's he been? He comes up with two big catches. Jonathan Phillips, and for the extra point. So we got the Gators up by 20. 8.59 to go. Lots can happen in <laughs> nine minutes. You just never know. <laughs>
You know, I gotta tell you, since I've been hurt and missing work, you've been a big help to this family. Ah. No, really. The cash we get from Athlac helps us maintain the house, put food on the table, ah. and my Jenny continues with her piano lessons. Yep, this family's doing just fine. Ah. 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 And it's all thanks to... Aflac. Ask about it at work. The kids have been wanting to go to the safari theme park since last summer. So we used our city cash returns card to buy the tickets and stuff. It was great to get close to the animals. But not that close. Luckily, we used the cash we got back to help pay for some body work. With your city cash returns card, earn unlimited cash back and get it mailed to you automatically. Whatever your story is, your city cash returns card can help you write it. Because city never sleeps. favorite team home with Glidden Team Colors Paint, the true colors of true fans. Team Colors Paint, exclusively from Glidden and only at the Home Depot. Three, the Tebow's with the lead here against the Hurricanes. Can I put all that air conditioner that Murphy has in the back? <laughs> Ooh, I need to get one of those That's up in the booth. It. We got to get you one. <laughs> They'll take care of you in the Coliseum next week. Yeah, yeah they will. <laughs> <laughs> None of those fans will remind you you're a part of that. Not a lot of that. No. I picked, him to go, I picked USC to go to the National Tower. That's why USC is these Gators. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Fielded by Harris. And Harris with a fine return for Miami. And Kirk, let's go back. Well, we just talked about how Lewis Murphy is the leader and the best route runner. And look what he does right here with Marcus Van Dyke turning him to the inside. Now he's going to go to the outside. Once you're in man coverage and you turn a defensive back inside, look how big the cushion is and what an easy throw it is for Tim Tebow. And we talked about Tim Tebow when he's in rhythm and balance, steps into the throw. And when he has a chance to do that, you can see how strong his arm is and how accurate his arm can be. Now Van Dyke didn't have a chance today, and uh, Marv still in the game as the Miami quarterback completes it to the 40. This time it's Farkasen. Kane Farkasen makes that catch, and here's what uh, Tebow has done in the two halves. Picked it up considerably in the second half. Threw to Hernandez for the first touchdown of the game, and uh, it's been the passing here in the second half. What, what doesn't show up in the stats is the offensive line play and the adjustments made by Dan Mullen and his offensive staff were tremendous, and that's what helped Tim Tebow have the better second half. Marvin Trouble going down for a loss, and we go to Reese Davis for an update. All right, Brent, Central Ford and South Ford. It's overtime. It's fourth and six. It's after a false start penalty on fourth and one for UCF. Michael Greco scrambling, and he's got to get to that yellow line or else the game's over. They brought out the chains. They had a look. This was to keep the game alive, and he... Missed it by that much. South Florida wins it by seven. The game of inches. <laughs> Here's Marv. Incomplete. Here comes fourth down, and Gators are going to get it again. Crowd wants another one now. versus Brandon James. James is going to try to turn it loose. Fumble! And I believe a Gator pounced on it and saved the day. That could be Joe Hayden. Joe Hayden recovering this fumble. A golden opportunity for the Canes. Loose football. But Hayden alertly falls on it. Time out. In a world overwhelmed by high gas prices, 
come four heroes. Armed with MyVet technology from Mitsubishi, Lancer, Gallant, Eclipse, Outlander. They are the phenomenal four. All equipped with Mitsubishi's four-cylinder MyVec engine, giving you fuel efficiency without sacrificing performance. Four cars, four cylinders, zero compromises. Visit your Mitsubishi dealer today. Sports. It's in the game. The economy's gotten real tough these days, which makes errands tougher to beat. Tougher to beat on prices. We give you the guaranteed low price. Tougher to beat on terms. Errands never checks your credit, and you can lease to own for 12, 18, or 24 months. Tougher to beat on quality. Errands has brand name furniture, electronics, appliances, and computers. We'll help you beat this tough economy. Because nobody beats Aaron's. Medellin sucked and the whole world knows it. Life is not all about making money in movies. You gotta help me let you get back to where you were supposed to be. Aquaman will be back. This Sunday. I'm ready to play the game, Aaron. Right. Prepare for the unexpected. And this town loves the comeback. And never count them out. If I made it back, so can you, baby, bro. Thanks, Johnny. Entourage. He's here. He's here. Vince is here. What do you want? Fairy dust? Go out there and greet him like a man. Only on HBO. Don't you love the dancing gators? Are we, are we at Camp Randall? Got the jump around going here. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, there's a controversy to play. I want at least to show everybody in case, especially some of the fans along the West Coast who didn't get home. And uh, that call, the celebration penalty against Washington. And that Reese, uh, fill everybody out what happened late in that Husky game against BYU. All right, Brandon, it went like this. Washington was down by seven. Eight seconds to go. Jake Locker goes in and scores a touchdown. Now he's going to celebrate. He throws the football into the air. By rule, that is a violation of excessive celebration. He was flagged for it, penalized him 15 yards, and then the subsequent extra point was blocked. Coming up on college football final tonight, we're going to talk to the national coordinator of football officials for his take on the judgment exercised by the official in that case. Odds on, they'll protect each other. Second down and 12. And I do not think under any circumstance that that young man in that situation was calling attention to himself, was trying to show up the other team or anything. It was a tremendous moment for the Washington Huskies. I, well, you watched it live. I watched right? the I watched the whole game. And for it to come down to that, and Jake Locker jumps in with two seconds to go, and sell it, starts to celebrate. The ball comes out of his hand. He wasn't showing anybody up. He wasn't drawing individual attention, attention to himself, which is a big emphasis this year. Um, he wasn't taunting anybody. That was a terrible call. And I know by rule, you could say he threw the ball in the air, so it's a penalty. But there, we've seen a lot, lot more things that are worse than what happened today with Jake Locker that have not been called. Yeah, that was complete to Lewis Murphy again, who's been on fire over the last the last few minutes. Now, just to fill you on the rest of the story, then from the 35-yard line, the extra point, which would have sent them to overtime, is blocked, and BYU comes out with a win. Not to take anything away from BYU. BYU was favored. They might have won that game in overtime. Sure, sure. Who knows what would have happened? But the players deserve to settle that game, and not an official over something that, you know, oh, he threw the ball in the air. Oh, that's terrible. Taken, we got, well, you're taking away on. from what college football is, and that's emotion in passion. And it was an excessive celebration. I'll be very interested in listening tonight to Reese and Lou and Mark, and I'm assuming Dave Perry will be on with him, the supervisor of officials around the nation. Tebow going deep strike. Murphy! You couldn't cover him any better than Bruce Johnson did, and Murph just backs on into the end zone. 52 big yards. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Lewis Murphy has taken over this football game. Must have a radio 
into what we're saying. Oh, they got a flag and bring it back. But ever since we we were wondering where he's been, he's had about three or four big catches. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Uh -oh. The wideout was not on the line of scrimmage at the snap. Penalty five yards down the end zone. You know, the greatest thing about beating a team like this early in the year is you can learn from mistakes like this and you can allow the film to keep the, the players' egos in check and say, hey, we're going to Knoxville, Tennessee. We've had, we had first game, we had 13 penalties. We showed up against Miami and we didn't have as many penalties, but we had some crucial penalties that cost us points. And that'll get the player, Urban Meyer's about as good as anybody there is at getting the players' attention off of mistakes. There's a blitz picked up beautifully. Swings it outside to Demps and uh, just a little short of midfield. They'd have to get to the 42 yard line for a first down. The other thing, uh, Herbie, about that pass, any doubts about Tebow's arm might have been dispelled with the last two throws. I know that one came back, yeah. but the touchdown and then that long throw. Now watch him air this well, ball out now. When he has time to throw and he has a chance to get his feet underneath him, and even this time he had to step up into the pocket, but you could see his, his footwork. He was able to step into his throw. He put the ball down about 55, 60 yards downfield on a rope. Second down and 10, and uh, there's the, uh, the handoff. Spence makes the play we defensively. Talking, you and I were talking about this, how, with Tim, actually, about how he is so creative and so powerful, and people were mesmerized by his athletic ability that people sometimes overlook, even the year that he had last year winning the Heisman, the great numbers that he put up, you still have people that don't look at him as necessarily a great passer. And if he didn't have that athletic ability, I think people would appreciate him more as a passer. And, and how about a young man during the offseason who goes on not one, not two, but three missions? I mean, that was, it was unbelievable how he spent his summer. And uh, that was a uh, Spence lit him up, didn't he? Good play. Wow, let's, let's, let's take a look at this. Sean Spence, who they think will be a future superstar for the Miami Hurricane defense. Super slow-mo here. Brandon James, my little man. And boom! Sean Spence lowers the boom on him. Little heat. Heat Miami Hurricane, Hurricane fans have a lot to be excited about in the coming years with this freshman class as the foundation of the future for Randy Shannon. Henry booms this punt. It'll come out on the 20-yard line. Aaron, let's go down and uh, let's talk about Tim Tebow and how he spent his summers with his father on those missions. Yeah, some kids, when they come to the University of Florida, they maybe go to Daytona for spring break. I don't know anything about that. But Tim Tebow, he goes to Croatia, the Philippines. How about Thailand? And, Brent, he has used his success and fame for a platform. You know, he went to those those countries and what he did was basically he ministered to orphans he wanted to talk to them and and show everyone football is not what is not his first love it's it's his faith and you know what he stood for it has bled on down to this gator team urban meyer says i have a kid that has done such good around the world that urban meyer took his entire family on a mission as well they helped feed people they built a medical center and Urban Meyer said he has never been so proud of his family in his entire life after taking that mission this past summer as well. Yeah, Aaron, uh, Tim Tebow is a very, very special, special young man. And uh, it's, it's amazing. First sophomore to win the Heisman Trophy. Uh, obviously a, a leading candidate this year, and that would duplicate what the great Archie Griffin did back-to-back -back for Ohio State in the, in the 70s if he can, he can pull it off. And uh, right now, the, uh, the defensive players are getting some work in. Cunningham, number 49, good player, gets another big play. I know it's 23 to 3, but if you're, a, if you're a Florida fan, you understand what I'm saying here. That is so important to see Jermaine Cunningham ripping through the offensive line on his own without blitzing to get pressure. Last year, Derek Harvey was really the only guy that could apply pressure without Florida blitzing. And this year, Charlie Strong wants to see this Gator defense able to apply pressure without always relying on the blitz. Gators want to hit 30. They uh, they want to deliver a statement here, and they sack Marv back at the five-yard line. 
And Boucher's going to have to punt from his own end zone with two and a half minutes to go in this game. Dunlap applying the pressure. He's going to be a dandy. He's a freshman. And there's Cunningham right here, but number eight on the other side. Dunlop is the young man who's going to have to eventually be the bookend to Cunningham. And he's got to learn to continue to have his motor cranking at all times if he wants to get on the field for Charlie Strong. That's a big play for him to get his confidence going early in this year. Brandon James is a return man. This one's returnable. James has got it at the 45, steps to the middle, cuts to the left, looking for an alley. And look who stepped up again. Bosher should be a safety. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Couple of kickoffs. Now saves a touchdown on a punt. 25 has a, it's like a magnet for 25. At least this time he made him cut back in. But Brent, I could tell by your voice, you and I were thinking the same thing, as that was a short punt. James, you knew he had a chance to take it all the way back. And look at your man, Bosher. He forces it back to the inside, where Sharpton's able to lower the boom. But another big play by Brandon James. Now Tebow and the Gators can uh, suck the final seconds out of this game. High to Phillips on a screen. Got three blockers, Phillips. Let me check that was James. And uh, let me take a look at the All-State standings review. There's USC. We'll see next week against Ohio State. We'll see if the Buckeyes should happen to drop. Oklahoma and Florida winning today. Missouri. LSU game, of course, postponed. For the Gustav. West Virginia, a loser. My partner. Kirk Herbstreet on a roll picking upsets, nailing East Carolina. Skip Holtz, coach of the year early, huh? Second down now for the Gators. And Tebow going in zone high and incomplete for Murphy. 23 to 3. Minute 10 to go. Big punt return. And the Gators, as you said, are attacking, trying to make a statement here Absolutely. to a lot of different people, a lot of different age groups, making sure that the young recruits down in South Florida have a chance to see the Gators offense. There are a lot of recruits lot here, of here tonight. Yep. Some of the best players in the state of Florida are here tonight watching the Gators. Third down and one now. And the handoff to Moore, and he is ripped down at the 11 yard line. Uh, there are some moments in this series that uh, folks have never, ever forgotten, such as John Reeves and the Gators on the flop when they let Miami score so that Reeves could break a passing record in a game they really had already won uh, against Miami. Nobody will ever forget that. Then Howard Schnellenberger tacked on a, uh, a field goal one night uh, when he was running up the score big time on Miami's part over Florida. So there, you go back historically in the games between these two, as uh, Jonathan Phillips now comes out for the 29-yard field goal. So he tacks on the three and says, Howard Schnellenberger, thank you very much. I did. Brent, I think you and I agree here. This game's in the books. But Randy Shannon and this young Miami Hurricane team, I know this is not a moral victory. You lose 26-3, to you're not happy. But considering the circumstances, the youth that they had in certain key positions, especially the secondary and under center at quarterback, you look at their schedule. They're at Texas A&M in a couple weeks. They get an off week next week to kind of regroup. Then they go to Texas A&M, and then they get into conference play. Look out for this Miami team to get better and better under, under Randy Shannon. This is a good football team. They're just young. All coaches in that situation, when you're on the receiving end, are never happy when someone tacks on a field goal in that situation. However, part of college football is a beauty contest. Let's be perfectly honest about it. There's going to be some voters in some of the polls who are only going to look at raw numbers and they're going to say, oh, they're beating by 23. Okay. Yep. Might not have watched how much trouble they had in the first half and they cast their votes. That's that's the system that we have that you live with. Subjective and, uh, analysis. 
So it's 26-3 after that field goal with 25 seconds to go. Florida survives, and uh, I, I go back, Cook. I, I really think this Gator team is very well conditioned. I thought of it practice the other day when I watched them. I thought their offensive linemen in particular were really good physical. You know, not a lot of fat. They're big, yep. you know, 290, 300-pound guys, but they look good. They they were uh, flexible when they went through the drills out there. It was, it was kind of interesting to watch. And I think the depth this year of Florida offensively, their goal is gonna, they're going to try to wear teams down by constantly rotating a lot of speed and putting a lot of pressure yeah. on defensive backs who maybe don't have that same depth. Yeah. You know, look where the Gators. Here's that chant for the SEC. SEC, you always we get that. that in, uh, in Atlanta, the Georgia. You always get Alabama. that. Although well, we heard that one about midway through the second quarter. Absolutely. <laughs> You're right. Gators, of course, get an off week before they go to Knoxville and get ready for some SEC football of their own. And yeah, they'll be watching they USC and Ohio State next yep. week. You bet everybody will. Tim Tebow, the Florida Gators. Randy Shannon with a quick handshake and uh, Charlie Strong, his friend, and uh, there he is with uh, Urban. Urban, of course, hoping to get deeper into South Florida recruit and uh, let's go down uh, below down to Aaron with the hero. All right, Frank, thanks so much. After the opening scoring drive, you guys finally got it into the end zone in the fourth quarter. What was the biggest adjustment you guys made? Well, uh, you know, they were doing some good things on defense, and they had a really good defensive plan, and the game plan is really well. We kind of, you know, uh, stalled there a few times and really just hurt ourselves. We could have executed, but a few missed blocks, a few drops, few, you know, bads, you know, different things, just mishaps, and then we just got things going. We stayed patient, stayed confident in our game plan, and kept working, and you were able to, you know, get the ball moving there in the fourth quarter. Well, the second touchdown in the fourth, your pass to Lewis Murphy, he seemed to be in a rhythm. What was the biggest difference for you there? Well, I think we just started to get momentum, you know, over and over again, you know, getting first downs and getting the momentum going. A hey, good job, man. And uh, I think that's really what it was. We got timing. I, when we believed in Murphy, after a few drops, keep coming back to him, and he, he kept stepping up and making big plays. So we just had to have faith in our players. You said you were young when this rivalry started. What is it like to be the first Gator team to beat Miami since 1985? Uh, it's huge. I think it's a great rivalry. Uh, unfortunately, we don't play a lot. I think uh, hopefully that will you know, start up more soon. And I'm just happy uh, for all Gator Nation, for all my team. And it's just a blessing right now. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. So Superman does it again, but the Joker hung tough for a while. It was 26-3 the final. Coming up next now on ESPN Sports Center. And a reminder, next Saturday, join us on ABC at 8 Eastern for Ohio State and USC. For more on this game, we'll be on ESPN News in just a moment. We'll wrap it up. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Along with Kirk Herb Street, Lisa Salters, Aaron Andrews, and our entire crew, I'm Brett Musburger. Good night from Gainesville, and thanks for watching, everybody. Now, here's Sports Center.